Why, good evening, folks. Just look at this gathering of friends. <laughs> Talk about magical. Well, I'll be. <laughs> it's the Blue Fairy. <laughs> when stars are born, they possess a gift or two. One of them is this. They have the power to make a wish come true. Remember, we must always believe in our wishes, for they are the magic in the world. Big doings going on, so let's get started. See you real soon. W, w Radio, your information station. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 504, the last episode of 2017. And I am here once again, not only to help you have the best vacation experience when you go to the parks, but I also want to bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are, not just with the podcast, but with videos, live broadcasts on Facebook every Wednesday night, our friendly and welcoming community over on Facebook at the WW Radio Box People Group, my books, audio tours, special events, meet to the month, and more. You can find everything over at www.radio.com. So as we prepare to turn the page and look ahead to 2018, this week we're going to look back on the 2017 Disney Year in Review. From Walt Disney World to Disney parks around the world, Disney Cruise Line, movies, and mergers, we're going to discuss the many additions, announcements, events, memories, magic, and more. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week, and I'll pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package. Then stay tuned to the end of the show as I'll have more information about upcoming WDW Radio events, live broadcasts, meets of the month, and more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. How did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. My goodness, how the time has flown. How did it get so late so soon? That Dr. Seuss was a wise man, because time does fly, especially when you're having fun. And oh, the fun we had in 2017, in Walt Disney World, in Disneyland, online, on the water, across across the water, and together in person. And as time continues to pass, I find myself becoming more and more reflective on the past. But I think as, as we prepare to turn the page to the next chapter of our lives, as the, as the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Eve, this is the perfect time to look back on the past 12 months, specifically the past year in Disney. So much has happened in, at, and not just to Walt Disney World, but throughout the Disney World, which has grown far beyond where it was just a year ago. 2017 has been a year full of new additions, announcements, surprises, and sometimes sadly, a few things which now only exist in our memories and photographs and tweets and snaps and instas, etc., etc., etc. So this week, we are going to gather around the fire because it's freezing here in Florida. It's like 52 degrees outside and people are hoarding bread and milk and Nutella at Publix. But we are going to reflect back on all that has happened over the course of the past year in Disney. And of course, I can't. I don't want to and seriously should not do this on my own. So I invited some members of the WDW Radio Nation and a bit of royalty to join me as we reflect back on 2017. And because I am contractually obligated to mention her first, like Barbara Streisand demanding her name be the first at the top of the movie credits, I am so pleased and thrilled to welcome back Mrs. Becky Menken, President, CEO, and Empress really? of MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. 
Floon. And the- Floon. That was that was the best word you can come up with was floon. It's Dr. Seuss. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll give you that. But you know what? <laughs> It's really good, though, that it's cold outside in, in Orlando because that just means that we're going to have a great time at Marathon with hand warmers and <laughs> hot chocolate. And what? Stop. We're having it. Why do you got to go there all the time? We're having a nice day and already you're talking about <laughs> the getting up at two o'clock in the morning and standing in yeah, 37 gonna be, degrees. It's going to be awesome. Last year we learned we learned that we need like four layers of socks. So this year we're ready. Yikes. If you remember correctly. So, again, that's going back to 2017 and looking back and learning from our lessons. So, you know, I listened. Well, you're right. Uh, baby, it is cold outside, but uh, <laughs> I am excited. Now, listen, if we think it's cold down here, where do we start talking to Fred and uh, the temperatures where he is? But I do believe still in Ladies First and returning to the show, I believe, for the third time. Yes. Fact or fiction. How we did a, a holidays at Walt Disney World. And when I asked... Oh, and I was on 500, so fourth. Fourth one? Oh, if I would have known that. Um, <laughs> but when I asked the nation to uh, see who would like to join me, you, uh, like our other guests, made a very compelling argument as to why to join, including, but not limited to the fact that you've made the big move to behind the castle this year and participated in so many Disney and <laughs> WWE radio events. So I want to welcome back... Mrs. Lisa Denoto Glasner to the show. Hello. It is good to have you back. Are you ready for your first winter in Florida? Well, it's been it's been difficult so far. It's only sixty three right now, <laughs> so we have the heat cranking, and I'm I'm in sweats. Mind um, you, you came from Baltimore, where it's about minus eleven right now, which I hated, which is why I moved. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it was Disney World, but it was really the temperature. It's just the weather. I think Disney had a little something to do with it. Uh, maybe a little tiny, tiny bit. And again, maybe, maybe someone Epcot. who is a member of the nation, um, has been listening to the show for years, has been to World and Land. And I think what got me in your message as to why you wanted to join was because you've eaten some park food. And I just stopped reading after that. I believe this is your first time on the podcast, although you've been to Expo and maybe we're on some live things. I want to welcome Father Christopher Manning to the show. Well, thank you, Lou. It's a pleasure to be here. And and where is here for you? Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Where the temperature so, uh, is a balmy? 38. Eesh. Ooh, nice. Sounds like Siberia. Um, <laughs> and a man who gave me a, a, a typical Lou Mangiello top 10 because I think... It's there was 11 in it. Um, he says a long time <laughs> listener, first time talker, except for momentum. Right. You were a two time momentum attendee. Correct. I yes, want to welcome correct. to the show for the first time, Mr. Fred Abley. Thank you very much. It is great to be here. It is great to have you here um, for the repeat. I was going to say the repeat offenders, but the repeat uh, guests and for all of you as well. I am really excited to look back on 2017. And and I like doing this with a few people in the group because I think there are things that we all sort of um, look back on and were sort of our, our keystone moments for us, things that we maybe found more important or significant to the Disney world or to us personally. But I'm going to throw a fly in the ointment, and again, we don't talk about this ahead of time, but I'm going to start off with a little bit of a mini lightning round right off the bat. Drive me crazy with these things. (laughs) And it's funny because I'm watching them on video, and every single one of them rolled their eyes. Becky (laughs) audibly did. Everybody else rolled their eyes, and that's okay. And here's the beauty about ladies first is at least I'm going to make you go first. So as you look back, um, what happened to Becky, the queen of everything? She'll get, she's going to start texting me. Don't you dare call on me first. Um, <laughs> my partnership right, is really important so well. to me, obviously. Um, as you look back at the Disney year of 2017, <laughs> what was, without overthinking it, what was the, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of this past year, your most vi- vivid memory of 2017? This is lightning round. It's supposed to be a little bit more lightning-ish. <laughs> The first thing that comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind when you think of Disney in 2017. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna nix all the personal stuff because obviously that's number one, but because we moved here. Um, but so okay, first thing that comes to mind is watching the final live stream of Wishes, um, because we were still in Maryland at that point and crying through it, um, because Wishes holds a huge place in my heart. 
Um, and then the next day, watching the live stream of Happily Ever After um, and loving it with all of my heart. Um, it's, uh, we, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about this more later, but they're very different shows. Um, but I, I was, I was so, so set to hate Happily Ever After with everything in my being um, because it wasn't Wishes um, and I loved everything about it. It is number one on my run soundtrack right now, my run play playlist, um, the music from it, I mean, of course. Um, but yeah, no, that's the first thing that comes to mind other than the fact that we live behind the castle. <laughs> <laughs> And for those of you playing the drinking game at home, every time that Lisa says that we moved behind the castle, you can take a drink. So, <laughs> uh, Becky. And make sure you have a designated driver. For this <laughs> right. Don't do it while you're driving. Let me be clear. Don't do it while you're driving. Um, <laughs> Becky, first thing that comes to mind, our most vivid memory of 2017. Well, for me, it has to be the fact that um, I was very lucky and everything worked out beautifully. We. Uh, checked off that box on the bucket list and got to do the China ABD and go to Japan, which made it the fact that I visited all the Disney parks in one year. And the fact that we didn't kill each yeah, other and we were together for like for. 22 go, days. Right? Yeah, 22 days of you and I together and we didn't kill each other. That was but, a Christmas <laughs> miracle. That was an absolute yeah, Christmas much, miracle. Pretty much. But uh, just that entire trip from start to finish, um, was absolutely amazing getting to see three very different Disney park experiences um, uh, across the globe. And then uh, obviously seeing the other parks as well and doing it all in one year. That was uh, probably the, the top of the list for 2017 for me. Father Christopher. Uh, for me, I think 2017, uh, I know this will touch on a future episode, but I think announcements um, just went to D23 being at the parks and rec. So Looking, uh, I think 2017 for me is going to be a year of change. Um, personally, I think one of the things I got to do um, was being in uh, Disneyland this year. And Fred? Well, the, I, I agree with everybody on those. And I think the other thing, too, is Disney Springs, ex not expanding, but I think becoming a more of a solid venue that you want to go to and the restaurants continuing to grow. I think that was for me when we were down there, not totally Disney related, but as a momentum group. And we were touring around down there. And I think that was when I realized, wow, this is this is impressive. This is now a whole other destination. It's a it, it's sort of the fifth gate for me. And I say this all the time. It is uh, I spend more time at Disney Springs than I probably do in the parks, especially in between Christmas and New Year's when we're recording this. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm, I won't go. I'm going to talk. I'm going to save some of the other things in the lightning round for a little bit later, um, because I think it'll be more beneficial to sort of go through the list first, but I'm going to sort of venture out of Disney world specifically for a second, because I think as we talk about the parks, especially going forward, and we'll talk about some of the, um, the big uh, Fox in the room later on, but I want to know <laughs> what was your favorite movie of 2017? And then when I say movie, I mean, Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, anything under the umbrella. To give you a little assistance, I will quickly go through the major releases. March, we had Beauty and the Beast. May, we had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. May, we had Pirates, Dead Men Tell No Tales. June was Cars 3. July 7th was Spider-Man Homecoming. Let that sit there for a second. November was Thor Ragnarok. There. November 22nd was Coco, Bring Tissues. December 15th was Star Wars, the oh so very divisive Last Jedi. In the same order as before, favorite movie of 2017? You? Um, so um, I'm going to give a really quick shout out to my other three favorites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my young Padawan, you have learned so well. <laughs> We, we all know that I love me some Spider-Man. Um, so Spider-Man Home Homecoming was phenomenal. Um, I'm a huge Guardians fan. So the, the second volume was amazing. Um, and The Last Jedi was like everything I wanted in a Star Wars movie that I didn't know I wanted. Um, all of that being said, Coco is my number one. Hands down, might be my new favorite overall Disney um, movie. I had avoided it for weeks um, because I knew it would trigger a lot of tears personally, um, and it did, but it was cathartic and wonderful and probably the most beautiful movie I'd seen in a long time. 
Um, I cried from the time that they started singing Remember Me until the credits, um, but for good reasons. Um, so there, there, there were big, big movies for me um, this year. But yeah, Coco was, was overwhelmingly um, my, my number one. And Becky, I, I'm going to answer mm-hmm. for you because I'm going to probably guess that you, you might haven't be wrong. Seen, you haven't seen most of them, but you love Thor Ragnarok because Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> because Thor, right? Of so course, there you go. Thor. All right. So I, I have not seen Coco, and I've heard everybody saying how amazing it is. But I have this thing. I had this thing about trying to avoid the ugly cry in a public theater setting. So I'm going to wait until that comes out and then bring it to my home and close the doors and close the curtains and watch it with a big box of tissues. Your husband's so lucky then... to be able to have that experience with you just one-on-one. Oh, no. He'll, he'll probably be gone. So it's, <laughs> he's going to be traveling somewhere during that time because the whole ugly cry thing is not good. Um, Star Wars Last Jedi, I, I had really high expectations. I still don't quite know what I feel about that one yet. It was great, but I, I need to see it again. I really do need to see it again. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, I'm with you there, Lisa. Uh, I had really high expectations, and it met the expectations. I loved it. I laughed. Um, I got to see Spider-Man for the character that he was meant to be, which the other movies across time have kind of taken him out of that box. Um, Thor was a a good... um, uh, It was fun. It was Thor. It was... Oh, Chris Helmsworth... Oh, but anyway, friendly show. Come on. Yes, I know. But he's he's pretty awesome. But the story was really good. I would say, though, that just slightly edging out Thor for me is Guardians. Guardians 2. I absolutely love that show. And I, I, I found <coughs> myself. Um, uh, <laughs> I know how my spirit animal and it is Rocket. <laughs> and I, I love the soundtracks from it. My youth comes forward from the soundtracks and. I have watched it over and over and over and over again. Uh, so that kind of tells me that it's um, it's a movie that's going to be sticking with me for for quite some time. And I really do like the characters. I like the story. I like everything about it. And I can't wait to see them in Infinity War. And before I get to you, Christopher, I don't know. If, forgive me if I've mentioned this before. You know that Tom Hiddleston was originally supposed to play Thor. Yeah, I heard that. And if you go, had... you can find his screen test as Thor and it's so mentally disruptive because it makes no sense in our, yeah. I can't, I cannot see him as Thor. I no, just can't. It didn't, it didn't it, it, this is no way of putting that together. And so, uh, Christopher and Fred. Uh, for me, I think, uh, Lisa's and my lists are very similar. I uh, loved the, I did enjoy star Wars. I loved the Marvel movies. Um, whether it is Thor, uh, Spider-Man was fantastic, Guardians of the Galaxy, fantastic. But for me, the number one movie, the only one out of the list I've seen twice already in theaters and I'm planning on going back again is Coco. Uh, I just really, it was a touching movie, loved the animation, great storyline. Uh, for me, by far, the, the best Disney movie of the year. Yeah, for me, I think, I, first of all, I haven't seen Coco yet. So I'm, I'm disappointed that we haven't, begun, you're, you're raving about it. But um, as Lou knows, uh, and many people would not know, Star Wars is my lifeblood. And it's not my favorite, but I loved it. And, and it was so divisive, right? But there's two things that I judge that movie by its success. And, and it was how I emotionally connected to it after I saw it. There's a scene in that movie that just really touched me because of that scene with Luke and Leia. Um, oh, yeah. Him not knowing that was the end of them together. But that too, that scene right there was, I hope that wasn't a spoiler for anybody, but that, that was really powerful for me. So that movie, you can, uh, you can pick it apart, but I think it was a great star Wars movie. Um, but the other thing, the movie that really was important for us as a family was beauty and the beast, um, beauty and the beast that you know, that was that really, first of all, was one of the, the great animations from Disney oh. studios now translated into live action. And for me, um, my oldest daughter, that was always her favorite. And to see that come to life on the, on the big screen, it was so much fun. And I thought it was really well done. It was really well done. It was surprisingly well done. And it was great to see that, that Emma could sing. Yes. <laughs> Sur- what? Surprise, Seriously, surprise, surprise. It, was, it was very cool. <laughs> So I, I will I, I want to quickly get to the one that I want to talk about. And there's no spoiler alert coming here. Um, I loved Coco. I, I thought it was a beautiful film in terms of the visuals, the music, the stories. Uh, again, I, I say as as somebody who's not Mexican to be able to see the way the culture and the importance of family was portrayed. I just thought it was a wonderful 
beautiful. And you're right, Lisa. It was a moving story. If you didn't cry at the end or at multiple times throughout, yeah. um, you should have. <laughs> and you need to go yeah. see it again. Um, I've seen all the other films. I really, really liked Thor Ragnarok much more than I thought I would. I thought it was the perfect blend of action and story and um, and retelling of some of the comic stories without it being too humorous. I thought Guardians of the Galaxy, there was a lot of humor in there, which I really liked. I think it de- definitely played to a younger demo, which I think they found after the first Guardians was very much what the film was attracting. But I said it when it came out. I am not too proud to say it now. I cried during Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, little seven-year-old what? Lou Mangiello, I cr- because that is the movie that I waited 30 years to see. And I thought it was the best, without even close, the best superhero movie of 2017. It completely re-energized... Uh. Slow down, sister. This is my time on the stand. They completely <laughs> re-energized the franchise and those characters, right? And yeah. I think, be- why? Because it was funny. I think it was touching. I think there was a, an emotional aspect to it. I think it gave you a lot of excitement for what's to come. I think, thanks to Iron Man, it connects Spidey to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what we're going to see in things like Infinity War. Uh, it was funny without being funny for funny sake, like the humor in there was peppered in just enough. And to me, compared to any other superhero movie, whether it's Guardians, Logan, Wonder Woman, Ragnarok, Lego Batman or Captain Underpants, it, it, <laughs> he was the best superhero. And for me, I have always had a personal connection to Spider-Man. I think he is much like I was, am. He is dorky and awkward and that angsty teenager and i think he's the most relatable character i think he's the character that so many people find that it's easy to identify with that i think something that a lot of the other heroes in the marvel cinematic universe are missing um so i loved it i love love that was that's what was so cool about it though is again it took the character character to the real teenager not not somebody supposedly 14 or 15 and then acting like they're 22, but it really did have that spirit of the teenager that's kind of a little wild and crazy in there. And my favorite scene from it, though, was when they had the look back at the battle from Civil War. And I got so excited when that because you know that you saw that battle, but then you didn't realize what was going on behind the scenes. And mm. it was so well done the way that they, they made that circle connect. It was very cool. And There's I, a, another I'm sorry, I was going to say, as I say, there's a scene too in there. You know, you're talking about connecting with the teenagers as a dad of of two young ladies. Um, the scene where Michael Keaton is driving them to the to the uh, the event, and he's <laughs> and, and and he's putting that pressure on them. I, I was squirming in my seat with that. Um, but that Michael Keaton played that role, so I mean, I think it was all well cast, incredibly well cast. Tom Holland is Peter Parker. Like he yeah. is just mm-hmm. awkward and goofy, yet lovable enough that he is. Peter- Andrew Garfield was never Peter Parker, and I don't even want to start getting into Tobey Maguire and Spider Man Three and the whole black shirt disco scene. But <laughs> Michael Keaton was the perfect vulture because, and I think unlike a lot of other, and I don't want to go too far into this, but unlike a lot of other movies, he's a sympathetic villain. Like you feel yeah. for him because the the actions that he takes are based mm-hmm. on simply trying to look out for his employees and his family. And you're right, that scene in the car, as awkward and as comfortable as it is, is brilliant. And if you look at, go back and watch the direction and cinematography of it, there's a moment when he sort of realizes and the light mm-hmm. on his face goes from the green of the vulture, to, uh, sorry, it goes from the red of sort of anger to the green of the vulture. And I'm like, oh my God, that's brilliant. So I love that film, Thwip. I, I want to bring up something, though, and I, don't yell at me, but I just want to um, argue with you about one point that you made. And I know it's not Marvel, but Wonder Woman was pretty amazing. Really? Are you snoring? You are really snoring. You are. Hello. That was a fabulous movie. I will say this. <laughs> Wonder Woman might, own, might be the only, like semi-bright star in a very dark DC yeah. movie universe. Again, I'm, I'm not matching it to DC and I'm not bringing the DC piece up. I'm just saying that for a standalone with Wonder Woman, 
that was really well done in terms of storytelling and um and, and the actress is amazing and the story was well done I, I just i really enjoyed it as a movie and i think it stood up to several of the marvel films that we've seen in my opinion i, I don't know i i I think Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern is laughing at the, the DC movies that have come out <laughs> after that. But I digress. Possibly. I digress. But, all right. Get in touch with your inner woman for a second. It was pretty cool. Wait, what? From right. that perspective. Let's, let, let's oh. move from the movies. Because this. I will tell you that um, I, I do have plans for a show, maybe sort of a top 10 Marvel movies coming in 2018. Um, I've been thinking about doing it for a long time and I think I need to expand and, and get on that topic and it half of it's going to be about Spider-Man. But I do want to go and sort of start off specifically in Walt Disney World. And I thought the way that we would do it is maybe go park by park and talk about some of the additions, the announcements, some of the losses, some of what maybe we are anticipating coming to each of the parks in Walt Disney World. And then we'll, we'll touch a little bit on uh, obviously the resorts and springs and cruise line and Disneyland as well. Um, Lisa, I will, I will tug at your heartstrings first because May was a bittersweet time for you with Wishes ending its run on May 11th and fortunately resuscitating you on May 12th with Happily Ever After. I thought the Cosmic Dance Party uh, debuting just a week later was going to be the high point. Uh, and obviously, <laughs> what we're, um, there was not a, lot of, not a lot of new additions to Magic King specifically, Although we could mention the sushi cart coming to Cool Ship, uh, Hall of Presidents reopened on December 18th after a uh, a long closure, not just to add the animatronic figure, but obviously to upgrade the theater, the seats, the, pro the projections, the audio, etc. Uh, and I think going forward, what we got from uh, D23 Expo was the excitement of what's to come in terms of Tron and the Main Street Theater, which is going to be based on that 1920s Willis Theater in mm -hmm. Kansas City. And as much as I mm -hmm. love Tron in um, China, I'm really looking forward to live entertainment coming to uh, yes. Magic Kingdom next year. Was there anything else that I missed? You know, this, and, and I, I think there was not a lot necessarily that happened in Magic Kingdom this year because I have okay. been, um, I believe in my heart that Magic Kingdom, specifically Tomorrowland, is going to be the next area that is ripe for growth, expansion and change there is one thing though that i think disappeared from there <laughs> and and lou maybe you could validate this the uh cheeseburger spring roll that uh, was located over what? by the yeah lou maybe you could talk about that what? <laughs> what? Well, look, i know it's my i, I know you thank you for right, i haven't even heard of this you never I thought had that was so no, every time every time we were there, they were either out of them or then we found out that they were going to be discontinued over there. They were right over there by the uh, Enchanted Tiki room. Which goes and... to show that Becky doesn't pay any attention to any content that I create that does not involve her. Really? I did a video about... <laughs> I missed it, sorry. I did a, I did a video about the cheeseburger spring rolls in Adventureland and as fate and coincidence will have it, not long after I did the video, they They discontinued it? Oh, it right. seems okay. to That's, be, no, see, it's a there. running, that explains everything. well, it yep. seems to be a running trend. Whenever I do a <laughs> video about something, um, it goes away. So and then stop. Just, I, just listen, just I am not still. kidding when I say that I did a, a video about poutine that I haven't posted yet for fear that I'm going to kill the daily poutine. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the, oh, great. Video killed the food star. I don't know. That's <laughs> <laughs> Please stay it's away not from just anything that one. I like. like there was, there's been a few. Like there's been a few that that I have in a, it, It's it's yeah. unintentional because you know how much I, I love my food. But wasn't but, there a macaroni and cheese something? Uh, there? Yes, I, I killed the pot roast, roast mac and cheese. Um, there the was a, a, the oh, the cupcake, eight. the Cheshire cat cupcake, and yep. there was one other thing in Epcot that I did, which Mickey, is also the good. Mickey cheesecake. Yeah. So the so Mickey no wonder cheesecake. you have it. Yep. No wonder you haven't taken a video camera into the boathouse. No, yet. never. <laughs> <laughs> and don't talk about the churros either. Please. No, I'm I'm not going to even bring uh, I'm not going to even bring my phone to Disney Springs anymore. Sunken treasures, please don't go anywhere near that. <laughs> um, all right, so let's move over to Epcot because I know there's some things that we definitely want to spend some time on. Again, we lost energy, Ellen's energy adventure 
which closed to make way for Guardians of the Galaxy attraction. We got a new adventure in Mission Space as we also anticipate the opening of a new restaurant opening, I believe, next year or in 2019. Um, the Spectacular opened in what is still what I think for the time being Innoventions. Uh, we obviously know that Ratatouille is coming to France and updated digital video production in China is going to have some what they call seamless circle vision and Becky for you I saved for your personal best for last the Chosa de Margarita finally opened in Epcot so you have a new Woo-hoo! margarita stand. Ah, research for that lounge show that have, has been you know on the books for four and a half years. Top 10 lounges in Walt Disney World I promise you will be a part of. Excellent. I believe Please Lisa's probably also waving her hands wildly. I am. I'm going to wear my T-shirt. <laughs> I've done the research, she's saying. so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anybody, just feel free to jump in. Was there anything that came or lost in Epcot? You know, give me your, your thoughts in either on the new adventure over in Mission Space, the loss of energy adventure, um, anticipating Guardians of the Galaxy, anything else that, that changed or was added there? Just when you said well, I think Guardians one thing of the you Galaxy. Did miss- Go ahead. All right, it's because one thing I think you missed is the uh, loss of Siemens as a sponsor um, for both Spaceship Earth and therefore uh, Illuminations as well. So, kind of, what does that, what will that mean for the future? Um, but I think it's going to, I think that will be a major loss in the long run. Uh, Lisa and other Illuminations fans, my timetable yeah. was a bit off, but I think if you love Illuminations, you might want to go and. And get those get those views in now while you can. Mm. I would probably agree with that. I think I, I I love Illuminations. I love the things that that they've had at Epcot. But I'm so excited to see what's coming. I'm so excited to see what the innovations are going to be. I'm was really excited when they were talking about Guardians coming in and the fact that Quill visited Epcot, and it, that just like put all kinds of chills up my spine of how they're going to tell that story. And I, I, well, it was, it's kind of sad to see the dinosaurs go away. Not really. Um, (laughs) For me, I'm really excited to see what the Imagineers are thinking about or have thought up and what's coming to Epcot. And again, we'll, we'll save speculation for a, a future show, but I, I believe in my little Epcot nerd heart of hearts that and we'll obviously talk about D23 Expo at, at in a little more in detail but i think that what we saw and heard announced at the parks and resorts um discussion at D23 Expo is just the first round of what is coming to Epcot um i expect many many more announcements that i think have been timed for 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 a variety of different reasons uh to be coming in the next 6 to 12 months and I think that the Epcot that Peter Quill is going to see in 2019 is going to look very, very markedly different than the one that Peter Quill saw in 1982. And I don't just mean over by Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean where currently Intervention stands. I mean the the what World Showcase looks and feels and sounds like is also going to change as well. Um, cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's. I think what I'm most it's it's interesting because I was thinking about obviously it's a topic for you know for another show in part but it's what I'm most excited about you know this year at Disney and looking forward is something is the thing I think I know the least about which is which is what's coming to Epcot but that it's coming particularly to Future World um, you know it's we all know it's the park that holds my heart the most um, you know it 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 needs the attention it needs the it it needs the the revamping to some extent. Um, especially in future world. Um, I mean, I think I sat at D23 hoping to hear a little bit more about what was coming and thinking maybe they were holding off for the 35th anniversary and then kind of went through the 35th and still still kind of didn't know much. But I mean, I think I think we all have an inkling of of, of what's on the, the horizon for, um, no pun intended, <laughs> 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 for, um, you know, for I've caught in the future. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's definitely what I'm most excited about, even though it's such a black box still, um, you know, closing out this year. Well, Lou, you've said some stuff in the past about, you know, not knowing what's coming is 
is the key part, right? And and the way I keep on looking at this after D23 was almost like a, a shopping mall where you have your anchor stores. So all the announcements were like the anchors, but what really makes the mall is all the little stores that connect the anchors. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wonder how all these pieces are going to come together. And it's just, I think the thing that, that, that was probably the, the biggest discussion that flew around in the, in the nation Facebook page was, you know, what is it going to, what are they going to take away? Are they taking away our youth? Are they taking away the eighties feel and so on? But it's just, you got to trust what's going to come. Like you've always said, and we all, we all agree with, I think, but at the same time, it's like, how long is this going to take? <laughs> you know, is it going to take, will I be retired by the time they complete it? That's what, that's the thing that floats around always in the back of my mind. Well, I mean, you got to remember too, there's so much that's going on right now. You can't do it all at once. You know, you can't open, you know, everything all at the same time. You can't do construction. And I think what you're going to see is major construction in Epcot. So I, I'm I'm not so subtly hinting to, oh, we're not just going to put a new um, something new in Innoventions. There is going to be major construction that is going to take place in and throughout Epcot. Um, and I think there's a lot of things that just have not been announced yet and that will be worth waiting for. Um, but again, there's still a lot that's all, you know, there's a lot of planes that are already in flight. And we'll, maybe that's a good way to segue over to Disney's Hollywood Studios where there's lots of planes in the air um, going on all at the same time. And I don't just mean Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land, but the, the great movie ride closed to make way for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I can't believe I said that, not being a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> but there were also, you know, the thing about Disney's Hollywood Studios, and look, throughout the year, it's it was, you know, being called what it was called when it very first opened, which is exactly what to a certain degree it is, which was sort of the half-day park. There was not enough to do there to keep you there from 8 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. But Maybe, Fred, to your point about, you know, there's the anchor attractions, but there was a lot of little things that got added. So there was Disney movie magic. The baseline tap house opened in September. This holiday, we got the sunset seasons greetings. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed, and, and, and I'm disappointed I didn't get to go more than just a couple of times, which was the music of Pixar Live, the symphony of characters over in the Beauty and the Beast Theater. I think there is something special about music being performed by a live orchestra, and that's exactly what you got with a little bit of visuals behind it. Uh, I thought it was beautiful. I don't think it got as much love or attention as maybe that it should. But, you know, Hollywood Studios right now is in very much of a, a transition phase as we get ready for, you know, Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge, both of which I think offer depending on who you are, your equal levels of excitement for what is to come. And the more that we see and the more details that we're getting about Galaxy's Edge, I think that is going to be that pivotal um, game-changing type of a land in terms of levels of immersion and interactivity. We, we, these are things that we've talked about for years in terms of how that's changed drastically since the opening of Disneyland in 55 in terms of we as guests, especially a younger generation, wants less of a passive experience and more of one that's interactive. That's exactly what you are going to get when you walk through those gates of Galaxy's Edge. That idea of stepping into another world, another land, another time is really going to take hold. And then obviously when we start talking about the resorts bleed very much into the opening of the star Wars resort as well. Yeah. Seeing the next things. And again, you're going to talk about it in another show going forward, but it's just exciting to see all of the, the disruption that they've come up with or that has been announced so far, because that's what really is getting exciting. The difference. You're not just going to walk up to an attraction, stand in queue, ride the attraction and leave. Everything about what they've been doing going forward is meant to um, to engage you, to really insert yourself into the story, not just as a casual observer, but as an actual participant. And I think that my problem at this point is wondering why we can't be into 2019 faster, <laughs> but yet I don't want to lose the year at the same time. <laughs> because Agreed, I, yeah. I am so excited about about what's coming, what's happening, and it's, this is just that lull between. And it's nice to see the things that they have been sprinkling all the parks with to get us through from here to there. But 
you know, it's it's inevitable that our sites are going to be pointed on those those things that are um, that, that really have us excited. And I, I agree. That, I think. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That as you talk about, especially Hollywood Studios and that move to that more immersive component, um, I really am being drawn to. As we'll talk about maybe later, and definitely for you for future shows, that uh, idea of that um, Star Wars hotel itself. Yes. Um, but even tying that into another announcement back for Epcot, the Mission Space restaurants, you know, that where the environment itself will be far more aver- immersive, I think, is where Hollywood Studios is really going to shine as the year goes forward. It, uh, that's another thing, too. I, I always I always I think it's pretty amazing how Disney uses a lot of venues as kind of like these sandboxes where they they are they're putting together these mini versions of things that ultimately get pulled into a major venue um and pandora of course is a big venue but that immersiveness there obviously will appear in star wars but even in, in epcot in uh, future world where they had the I, I can't remember the name of the ride but where you design your own roller coaster and you ride it um i always wondered i mean i think that was a neat thing but i always wondered what they were learning from that um you know as far as you know guests coming in and doing something interactive to ultimately experience something interactive and i wonder if that'll appear in some way inside the millennium falcon experience or or wherever else but i think they do that in a really cool and smart way well, I think what we one of the things that we learned, and Lisa, I know you also attended um, the Star Wars Galactic Nights. You know, obviously with no Star Wars weekends anymore, they had a one night special event this past December where they had a panel talking about Galaxy's Edge, and really for the first time, giving us some additional details about what this this remote trading port of Batu is going to look like. And they were very, very specific and very deliberate, I think, in the presentation, talking not just about the the look and the story and the detail. But it's going to drill down to, you know, to sort of quote, even the water fountains, the merchandise that you get from the street market and the exotic food and the beverages is really going to sort of make you believe, again, nine-year-old Lou Mangello freaking out, like that's what I wanted my adventure to be in. And I think it's beyond just the attractions where you're sort of stepping foot into the the uh, the hangar bay of the Star Destroyer, or getting to pilot the Millennium Falcon, which is what every nine-year-old boy wanted. You know, we all wanted to be Han Solo because Luke was a little whiny in the first movie. But we also, <laughs> but you also can earn like galactic credits, and you're starting to understand like that there's so much more that you are going to be able to do than just go ride rides, eat food, and and buy merchandise that looks as though it was created by these local street vendors wait they're gonna have you earn credits i didn't hear that part yeah Yeah. you're gonna be able to earn that's interesting right because that's that was the whole not that this is directly related to disney but uh battlefront 2 that was that big debate right and when you go and you play that game you earn credits to build out certain things i wonder if there's going to be some crossover so depending on how you and your team does on the missions like in the falcon it's not just sort of that one off get off and then you go right you earn, and again, I don't know the specifics of it, you're going to earn galactic credits for how well you handled the mission. Or if maybe you did something wrong, maybe you're on one of the bounty hunters lists. And those credits and that experience is going to follow you beyond the, the black box of the attraction into the cantina, I would expect, throughout possibly the entire land. And if you're staying there, into the Star Wars resort as well. So finally, those all of those years of staying up till four o'clock in the morning playing video games might pay off. Yes. <laughs> Dude, all awesome. of you who played Dark Forces and TIE yes. Fighter and X Wing and the Yoda Desktop Adventures and all yes. of the eighty five different Star Wars games. Finally, mom and dad, I told you one day we're gonna pay off. Forget that law school nonsense. Exactly. That's awesome. Redemption. And, and again, you know, yeah, and again, making it immersive and, and bringing you into being part of the story is incredible. That's where it should be going. And again, it's a disruptor in the industry. And if this goes over well in the hotel, I can just imagine what other entities will take on that type of immersive experience. And you know, this, a lot and, of and I think I made a mention, you know, this concept is one that's not new. This concept, and probably even dated before this, in terms of Disney World, you know, the first time I remember them talking about it was what Hollywood Tower of Terror was going to be, where it, your experience was actually going to begin when you got off the plane, when you got into a car, which was an old 
like Woody's Curtain. wagon from the twenties that was going to have um, curtains on the windows so you couldn't see. So the second you got in that car, that's when your adventure began. I think they're going to take that same type of experience and bring it through mm-hmm. not just the attraction but the entire land, and certainly for guests that stay at the Star Wars Resort as well. Well, way back when, somebody was thinking about doing a Star Trek version in Las Vegas years and years ago, too. So it's always been on somebody's mind of trying to figure out how to make it happen. And it's so great to see that Disney is finally the one that's executing. Well, yeah, and, and it, it's such an incredible gift, right? I mean, like there's there's only so many sort of uni- fictional universes out there that are so complete that you can fully lose yourself in them that we have grown up with, be it. You know, and and you know, and 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 Disney owns one of them now, and yeah. is, is, and is working. Yeah, it's it's two incredible. of them. I mean, two of them. Yeah, yeah two, two of yes, them. Yes, I mean, but complete universes that you can fully lose yourself in the fiction of of that that fully detailed world. Um, you know, I mean, when you look at what they did with with Pandora, I mean, it only it you can only begin to imagine what they're going to be doing with 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 a fully complete universe that you can that that you could already sort of lose yourself in before they even got their hands on it so i i'm, I'm so excited for what's to come I'm, well you know I'm, to that point lisa i, I just want to yeah. back up again to the magic kingdom um so the the castle became that venue right so you could stay inside mm-hmm. of it and yeah. did they make an expansion to that this year or was that no prior so, year or, or yeah so that castle originally was just for a year of a million dreams and then it was um you know given away for some um, you know, charitable causes and things like that. But the thing about the castle was it was a special experience that nobody could buy, right? You could not, right. and I think to us, to, for the most part, you still cannot buy that experience where the Star Wars Hotel were, were speculating that anybody is going to be able to buy this three or four day experience there. And again, like you said, sort of expanding on what you're able to do. You're not limited to one right. person, but you're, it's something that, and you don't have to even stay at the hotel in order to have that kind of thing, because I think that is what Galaxy's Edge is going to be a game changer and a disruptor in the theme park industry. Yeah. Another thing too to to point out the difference between the castle and, and this experience is that the castle, uh, the dream suite is one room. It it wow. is one room that only mm-hmm. six people can sleep in. So this is a ho- a full hotel that's going to have a quite an array of guests and 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 cast that are all going to have characters that uh, it's just going to be mind blowing if it's done correctly. And, and Becky, it'll Disney, be, so it will be. And Becky, I'll be. I'll, I'm going to be so interested to get your take on it, kind of when it when it opens, because it, it, what they're actually doing with it is anybody's guess at this point. But in my mind, I almost see it as like a cruise ship type experience, Correct. where yeah. it where it is the trip, like it it is the embodiment of the trip. I mean, I I, I imagine it's going to be pricey to stay there. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but the reason for that, I'm sure, is going to be that you know when you're going there, that is your destination to some extent. You're not going and staying at the Galaxy's Edge Resort, you know, to spend your time, you know rope dropping magic kingdom right, right. Um, and i think that is the intention is yeah. to have that type of experience now how it gets yeah. executed when it's finally open might be a completely different story but in my brain that's what mm-hmm. i'm thinking i'm thinking that you're getting on a spaceship and you're, you're kind of going, on the ship. you are on the ship and ho- hopefully that's mm-hmm. what they're doing with it because that would be the disruptor that we're talking about that yeah. would be the thing that no one else has that yes those of us if you can afford it or not afford it you're going to probably save a bunch of pennies over time to do it if you're yeah. uh, that invested in that universe and a lot of us are so I, I think that they are really on to something if it's executed properly and that's the thing too look this is not and I think even beyond and I agree with you Lisa about it, it being sort of a cruise ship type experience but I think it's going to go beyond that because what's going to happen is that once you get there and your adventure starts it's not just going to be oh i'm drinking the blue milk it's going to be costuming it's going to be characters it's going to be stories that's really going to be happening around you all the time almost they almost sort of can't get yourself out of it because it's going to touch every part of your day right and it's going to be a unique Unlike going to ride Star Tours where the 40 people in that cabin have the same experience, every single person is going to have their a, a unique journey. Right, because I mean, even some of the the details that we've that have been speculated. Obviously, I don't know from anybody who actually knows what's going on, but it some of the details that have kind of been speculated are that you'll have a character in this universe, that you will have a costume in this universe, that you will have a backstory in this universe, and again, if they do that 
that's going to be doing it correctly because then you're going to be invested. And if you go once, you'll probably have something like building your credits or building your clout, and then you'll have to come back again. Can they do like a BYO so, costume? Like I can finally take the Ewok costume out of storage and wear it oh, like, no, you know, multiple days at a time? <laughs> you're going to be an Ewok. Not in storage. <laughs> Umojello is story. Ewok number twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I can take I the Ewok we were... So, but all right, let let. Oh and I think gosh. this is a good. <laughs> I think this is a good time to transition to. Really, I think the the arguably the biggest thing that we got in twenty seventeen, and I think touching on that idea of an immersive experience and speculating as to now with the ownership of the property completely, what Pandora, the world of Avatar looks like in 2017 and what it's going to look like oh and taste like oh my god i love satuli canteen what it's going to taste like <laughs> in uh, going forward um have all of us we've all seen pandora yes yes mm-hmm. sort of yes. quickly go around the horn again in the same uh ladies first order um give me your thoughts on um on specifically on on pandora quickly me or Becky first? You first. <laughs> Becky needs time it. to think. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start by saying I'm so impressed with us for not bringing up Pandora for the most part until now. That's incredible. Um, but I, you know, I, it's 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 its own beautiful universe. You know, it's a it's a small piece of the Disney property. Um, it's stunning beyond stunning you could take pictures there all day long um i could i i i've i've said before and i'll say again i think satoli canteen is my favorite quick service on property um and you know obviously as far as attractions are concerned i mean navi is um it i ride it before you ride flight of passage because you don't want (laughs) to wait in line for navi after you've ridden and i think and i think you should just ride it first for the yeah, effect just, as well. Yeah, just ride it first. Let yourself be immersed in the environment that is Navi. Um, the the song of the shaman um, will stick with you for the rest of the day. It's beyond beautiful. Um, and flight of passage. I mean, I was. I think the first time I wrote it was this past June when I was down for a house a house planning meeting, um, <laughs> and I was lucky enough to ride it four times that day because um, for some reason the lines were were shorter than usual. Um, and the first time I got off, I had, I had gotten on with a group of friends and they all looked at me and they were like, so, so what, what was your thought? And I, I had, I had no words. Like I, I, I wanted to say something to satisfy them that I had loved it, but I, I was just stunned. Like I, and the, the best thing that I could come up with was that if, if joy was an attraction, <laughs> it would be flight of passage. Like wow, it was like that, like it's, it is joy. It is the embodiment of joy. Um, it, it. It's 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 beautifully done. It's beautifully executed. Um, you know the 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 handprints of the um, the Imagineers on the wall as you walk out is is the final the, the final gift. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's it's wonderful. If you if you haven't ridden Flight of Passage, I would say like I I don't think I'd wait in line for more than thirty minutes um, for anything else at Disney. Um, I'd wait. I'd give several hours to Flight of Passage easily. Like I'd bring a book and give it. And if you're coming on a trip, um, you know, and it's your only visit, you know, that year, just, just make sure you ride it. Like it, if it's a three hour queue, just wait in it. Did you cry? I did. Okay. I cried. Yeah. So I I, I just talked for a long time. (laughs) No, I mean, look at the attraction warrants it. I mean, I think the the attraction absolutely warrants it. You, you probably does. said like, exactly I, what all of us are thinking of. And for me, uh, you know, we, Lou, you were riding the same time, the first time that I rode. And when we got off the attraction, and it, you know me, it it doesn't take a lot to, you know, make me talk. Um, so to stop talking, I was speechless when I got off that ride. I was and I can't even think it's a ride. It's, it is an attraction. It is an immersive experience. I rode a banshee. It breathed under me. I could feel it and hear it and f- almost feel its heartbeat. It was so real to me. If if you let your mind go about the cue you went through and just know the story and figure out, you know, what uh, how you connected to this beast, you really experienced what they had put you into for that story. And uh, when I, I, I 
I can't, I still can't really put it into words for the exception of I actually rode a banshee in a foreign world and it was amazing. And I, like you, Lisa would uh, wait in line and I typically am not one of those people that will wait in too long of a queue for almost anything, unless it depends on the company that I keep. If you've got and a whole queue, bunch of friends with you, right? Yeah, the, the queue, queue is, is amazing. Beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. And I, uh, I would wait a good couple of hours for that if I had to, because it was that impressive. Um, I do have the other side of the balance for Pandora. I would like to see some more uh, put into the nighttime experience. I think it is very cool the way it was done, but I think my level of expectation may have been a little bit higher. Uh, So I'm hoping to see maybe a little bit added to that as Pandora grows and progresses. But that ride on Flight of Passage was spot on and amazing. And I'll never forget that first ride. Yeah, that I it, that whole park is is um, is different. So when my brother in law was down there um, last month in November, and he was you know asking about you know what it was like, and I was in and out of there at the later hours. We've been going down for years and years and years. Like I'm sure many people listening are right, and and they're automatically going to assume either you go there early in the morning to beat the crowds, or you try to go maybe late at night. But if you have little kids, it's tough. But that is one of the parks that I think is really really cool when you're there during the transition of the day to the night. And I, I think you brought it to our attention in an earlier podcast, Lou, where you can hear the sounds when you're, when you're or was my one of your video walkthroughs you had with uh, the media days. You talked about how you can actually hear the sounds change. And I, and I really keyed on that. And that that's what struck me. I mean, I, I, I'm a stone's throw from the woods. So I live by the woods and I experience the woods more than I need to. And but when I was there, it was that was impressive. That was a really, really immersive experience. And that's what I was trying to get him to understand. I said, no, no, go later in the day. And as it transitions into the night, that's when you want to experience it. But he was having a hard time scheduling it that way with his kids because he's, he's got four four kids. Yeah, I think the, the word that everyone's used uh, both here and in other descriptions, it's just that immersive side that is uh, Pandora, that unlike Magic Kingdom where you go from – a ride that may be very immersive, but then you step out and there's another ride right next to it. When you walk into Pandora, the whole environment envelops you. Um, Whether it's the lighting, whether it's the plant life, whether it's the sound, you know that it's all connected intimately in an overarching story from entrance into the land into exit of the land, not just an individual ride. And I won't take too much time reiterating what i said we on show 484 we did a really in-depth review of pandora on 489 we did a live review of satuli canteen which i agree with you lisa is arguably one of if not the best counter service sir, without i think possibly without question the best in park counter service restaurant oh yeah anywhere yeah. Um, it's delicious. It's healthy. You can create your own. We'll talk about the mobile ordering aspect you of can it mobile as well. Order. <laughs> I think too, what you need to keep in mind is I, and again, I'm, I'm speculating to be clear. I don't think that they are done with Pandora. I right. think that, um, there were plans for, I think there were plans from the very beginning to expand on that area, and there is some room. They do have a little bit of room uh, behind Satuli Canteen and where um, uh, Wind Traders is to do a little bit more uh, expansion. But I think, in again, to sort of summarize my feelings, I came off, I was emotional, I felt all of those things. And again, too, I think that Flight of Passage, it was a, um, a, a cornerstone moment in attraction imagineering in terms of the type of experience that we got as guests. More importantly, it's going to be, it's setting the bar higher for the type of experience that we are going to expect as guests. We understand what a typical black box uh, uh, dark ride is potentially going to be, but in terms of upping the game, that's what the standard is now. That standard is no longer just a, a visual and auditory experience. We want to feel it. We want to feel the wind. We want to feel the breath of this animal that we are riding or whatever it is that we're doing. And I think that is what this attraction and I think that land sort of single-handedly did. Mm-hmm. Agreed. 
I think it it does it pulls you in. I saw the movie. I liked the movie. It wasn't. Um, I I only went to see it once in theaters. It was not raptured by it like many. But when I got off the ride, I immediately bought a Navi me. Um, that I had no intentions of buying one going in, but just being there right. and riding the ride, it there's just something about being there. And and and, the, and it wraps itself around you, and that's where you know once again, it, it, whatever's coming with Galaxy's Edge, they they pull it off in an amazing way. There, you walk in there, and and you feel like not that you want to be, but you do feel disconnected from the traditional Disney brand in a way. I mean, not that I mean not that we would want that, but I'm sure we. Some of the people that may be going to see Star Wars Galaxy Edge, they may not be the traditional Disney fan, um, and maybe they don't want to see that. I don't know. But um, when you go into Pandora, you do feel like you're in a different world, and it's 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 incredibly well done. I agree. Uh, I I do want to move because there are some things that I think are gonna we're gonna get to that are gonna we're gonna need to spend a little bit of time on. I I want to go to everybody keeps on talking about the fifth gate. When is the fifth gate coming? I think the fifth gate is already here. And I think maybe, Lisa, you as a local might be able to touch on this, or maybe for those who are frequent visitors, Disney Springs is the fifth gate. For me, it is the fifth gate. Disney, the, the transformation of Disney Springs from what it was to what it is now is remarkable. It went from a, a venue, a location, a debt that never knew what it wanted to be. It didn't know, you know, early on, it was obviously the only place really that you can go shopping. Then it tried to come up with this identity of what Pleasure Island was, was competing with Church Street Station. It killed Church Street Station. It did what it intended to do. It kept guests on property, but I think it didn't keep guests on property necessarily the way that they intended it. Uh, Families didn't know if it was for them. It brought in locals sometimes they like to partake in some of the adult beveraging a little bit more than they should and to some people there was something that didn't feel especially late at night it lost a little bit of that disney magic disney touch that's all gone the the remnants of pleasure island are gone the ghosts of pleasure island have been exercised and disney springs i say this all the time because it's true is the is the place that i spend more time than anywhere else, probably. Obviously, most of that's at the boathouse. But as a I was whole, gonna say, are are you paying? <laughs> are you paying um, rent there yet? Because I think that one little corner with a with a chair and a table pretty much should have your name on it. By well, it kind of does, but but okay. it's true. Second. I mean, I, I have really come to love, and maybe one of these days, I sort of need to do sort of an overarching look at Disney Springs because I don't think it necessarily gets the the 30,000 foot view attention that it should. We know of all the little things that open up here and there and things that are happening. But 2017, this is, and I'm sure I'm missing things, including uh, a lot of the shopping venues. Planet Hollywood Observatory opens, Paddlefish reopens, Polite Pig reopens, um, Pizza Pont- Ponte opens, the Edison is technically opening on New yeah, Year's yeah. Eve. Um Disney Quest closed. The Void, that Star Wars Secrets of the Empire hyper reality experience is awesome. Becky, you didn't see it, but I did a video about it. Um, there's a new Cirque show that was finally announced. And looking ahead, I would bet dollars to donuts that the continued growth and expansion and incredible storytelling that people don't recognize is going on in Disney Springs is going to happen. I think downtown Disney West Side. And I'll talk more about this maybe on a what we're looking forward to. I think downtown Disney West Side is what is primed. And again, I think with the closing of Disney Quest and the NBA experience coming in and the Nuke Cirque show for that next phase of renovation, you can wave goodbye to the often underutilized, except when it's really busy, uh, ground level parking lot behind Cirque du Soleil. I don't mean the watermelon lot. I mean that one that's closest to... Um, the waterway and the the uh, Saratoga Springs, there's a huge pad of land right there. I would guess that that is going to be expanded upon because of the success of what has been happening at Disney Springs um, from a keeping the um, occasional guest there to shop and dine as opposed to going to outlets or Mall of Millennia and giving locals a place to go and hang out and do what they didn't do before, which was admittedly spend money. I'd say it all the time. 
the the people that love the Adventurers Club the most are the ones that killed the Adventurers Club because they right. went there, they watched the show, they didn't eat because there was nothing to eat there, and oftentimes wouldn't drink, so it wasn't pulling in the revenue that it needed to. That has all changed. Uh, again, maybe sort of around the horn. What do you think is your favorite or greatest addition to Disney Springs mm-hmm. in 2017? That's so starting with else. me. <laughs> you can start anybody. I mean, you can sort of go in that same order, or if you have something you know that you need to get off your chest, please just jump in <laughs> and feel free. Well, I think the ones that are already open, I really enjoyed Paddlefish. Uh, went up, ate on the top deck, just in their order off the menu, kind of in their bar area, and just had a beautiful view of Disney Springs. Uh, we had eaten a late lunch, so we were just kind of snacking. So we ordered like a, a pot to share and some appetizers and just sat on that top deck and, and looked out over Disney Springs. Uh, for what is slightly to come at the end of the year, I am looking forward to Edison and that whole complex of four different restaurants slash bars all connected. So you have the, the Pizza Pont, the um, Hideaway, the restaurant. And then the Edison itself with all its uh, small rooms and, and bars. So I'm looking forward to seeing how how that interacts with the rest of Disney Springs. Wait until you see the inside is all uh, I'm going to say. Wait until the, you see that's, the inside. Uh, and, and we're not supposed to look forward, but I can't help it. But all right, so I have to do two <laughs> things really quickly. Now, I know I'm going to say Boathouse for a second because of two things and not just the food. But I loved the attraction that they brought with it with the with the cars that go into the water, which is really fun. Um, but for me, I'm a big hydro uh, fan. So we have the water follies here. We've got Seafair here. We've got, I was raised around hydros. So when I went and walked around the outside, it's not just the restaurant inside, but the bar, of course, is outside. And they've got little areas to sit and just look at all of the different vintages of, of boats around. I loved what they did with that. And to find a hydroplane in there was really cool, too. An old vintage one made me. Did anybody else think but, that she said I'm a huge Hydra fan? I thought not exactly. No, like, of course you're no, a Hydra hydro. fan. Hydro. Hydro. Just say Hail Hydra <laughs> once just so I can get it on, really? on tape. Yeah. No way. <laughs> hydro, as in hydroplane. You know what those, it's a boat that goes really, really fast. Just so you, you know, when you're sitting there and you're eating that big pile of seafood, outside there are boats. It's really cool. You should probably look. Um, but. And you know this because we just wandered around uh, Tokyo Disney Sea. I know that there's going to be some sort, or there, ha- there's been the rumor that the Edison is going to have some sort of attachment to SEA. And so the Edison is the thing that I'm looking forward to most because yeah. maybe I'll actually get a shirt or a patch or something with the SEA logo so I don't have to like rip it down from a, a flag that is, you know, sitting in Japan. So do you like, want good because, news or you want bad news? Oh man, you give me always give me the bad news first. You know how that You're goes. not gonna get an SEA patch there. No. Not there. All right, give me the good news. There's no there, there's no good news. I mean it's gonna be awesome, <laughs> but you're not gonna get an SEA patch there. <laughs> I thought it's gonna be awesome. Oh it's I'll beautiful think. inside. It's a it's a it it's gonna. It's a very interesting venue. Um, There's not gonna be any. Any. They're not gonna do the thing that's that they not, were talking that's about. That's not. That's not. That's oh, not their bag, right. baby. I'm crushed. Hail Hydra. I'm so crushed. <laughs> <laughs> no. Lisa, what what oh, was your favorite new God. addition to Disney Springs? Favorite new addition. I don't know what what my favorite new addition to Disney Springs was. I mean, I I haven't been to Boathouse yet. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We're going. Jock I promise. Bar. I'm now going to just. Wait, you better have, you better have a big lunch plan, Lou. <laughs> well, I'm not the only human that hasn't been there yet. All right, that's good no, enough. It's not, it's not just you. It's it's also me. <laughs> um, one day, one day, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go by myself. Oh, um, <laughs> You can't guilt me. I'm Catholic and Italian. Come on. You got to do better than that. But of the places that are new or open there, uh, have you been to Paddlefish or Polite Fig? I can out guilt you all day long. <laughs> I'm going to get my mom on here and then see. You guys can, you yeah, guys let's can do, do that. Battle for that would guilt. be awesome. That's, that's okay. <laughs> she just left today. Darn it. Or else I would have had her on. Oh, I'm going to call her. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, what was Lou like when he was like 12? 
How about 16? <laughs> All right. How so about I, that Jock I, Lindsay's? <laughs> how about that Jock I think I, I'm just really incredibly impressed by how they have taken this district and, you know, created this, you know, it, it's got, it's got normal stores. I can go to, I can buy makeup there. I can go clothing shopping. I can, I bought my last pair of sneakers for the marathon there. Um, but it still feels like Disney world. Like it's I, beautiful. it's beautiful, yeah. you know, as you know, over the holidays, it was decorated beautifully, the music and the smells and the lights and the, the, you know, decor. Um, you know, I, I just, I, Disney just overwhelms me, you know, all the time. And I think Disney Springs is such a great example of how they have taken a shopping district and made it still feel like a place where, you know, I'm at Disney World with my kids. Um, I- and it, it just, you know, it, 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 it's amazing to me how they, how they have created this, you know, this space. I'm so excited for, you know, I know they're live streaming the last La Nuba, um, you know, this, this weekend. Um, yeah. And I'm so, so excited for what's to come with a Disney IP inspired or, or driven um, Cirque. I'll be, I'll be knocking at the door on their first day. Um, I won't tell the story about how I missed my tour of the Edison. <laughs> But I'm, but I'm in, incredibly excited about that space and the related restaurants that are there. Um, Gosh, but I can't believe everything on the internet anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wikipedia is really where you want to, where you want to get all your accurate information from. <laughs> that, that's your best. Uh, that's your best spot. Definitely. No, but I mean, I think I don't have like a specific restaurant. Of course, I've never been to Boathouse, so you know, I can't speak to that. Um, but, but, um, but no, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm. I, I I love that Disney Springs isn't Pleasure Island anymore. I mean, it was fun back in the day, but now that I'm a you know the mom of two small children who you know wants to go somewhere besides the parks once in a while, I I just I love that space. I love that we can go there any time of day or night and feel you know like like we're still in Disney World, but you know, but not. It's it's great. I'll admit that when you said the Fifth Gate, I I might have thought you meant IKEA, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant a new can, car. But I, talk, but I can talk about Disney Springs too. <laughs> Listen, I, I think I anybody who goes to IKEA on a Saturday afternoon deserves a, a medal or a monument or something in between. All right, I want I want to hit a couple of other things quickly. Um, obviously, the Copper Creek Villas and cabins at Wilderness Lodge open in July. Um, I will tell you, having I haven't stayed there, but I have toured them. Those cabins may be for me one of the most desirable resort locations anywhere because they are beautiful they are comfortable and the views of that water are just spectacular um, i've stayed there they are they're very comfortable and they are made for families and they've got that wonderful little enclosed area so you can be outside or inside there's the design is gorgeous on the inside and it's kind of got a little bit more of a concierge feeling to them than um they've had in other locations uh, it's so well done, and I think that that's what they're going to be doing going forward. Uh, they're a little spendy. They're not. Um, they're not made for a, an economy vacation, but uh, it would you be worth it. You can book them through MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. We know. Yes, you can. <laughs> I want to just Thank quickly hit plug. on a couple of miscellaneous um, things that happened or additions this year, which I think are still significant. Um, the uh, Misadventure Falls opened over at. Typhoon Lagoon, another sort of attractor, again, especially for locals. But a couple of things, too. We had the introduction of the minivans in July 2017, and they're everywhere now. We had um, mobile ordering, which it was introduced, I believe, in probably late May through the My Disney Experience app, which, and I think a lot of people, especially first-timers, maybe don't even know of this. It allows you, if you're so inclined, to pre-order and pre-pay for your food at a number of different counter service locations throughout Walt Disney World. And then as soon as you get there, you go to sort of the mobile order area, you bypass the queue, and then go straight to your own sort of a, a designated pickup area to get their food. A huge time saver for a lot of people. I know a lot of locals, I see Lisa's nodding her head, a lot of people use this all the time. Um, I think it's important to say because it doesn't happen very often that in September on the 10th and 11th, they close the parks for two days because of Hurricane Irma. 
And I say it because, one, because it's a rarity, and two, because I know a lot of people who were here during that time and had nothing but good things to say about the way Disney handled that and gave the guests the best possible experience that they had while they were confined to their resorts, bringing in games, bringing in characters, having food available. So I applaud the the teams of cast members that do that because you can understand the disappointment for people when that happens. Uh, And something else that happened relatively recently over the last couple of weeks, because I have to go back to dining because, hi, I'm Lou Mangiello, is if you've never used the website or app called Open Table, it's always been kind of like a little bit of a secret weapon in terms of getting reservations somewhere, especially locations in Disney Springs. Uh, but now certain Disney restaurants have been added to the open table system. Uh, I know Flying Fish is one of them. There's a few others that they are testing it out with. So in addition to using the My Disney Experience app, you now have sort of a backup location that you can use to try and get reservations. Uh, of all the things I mentioned, the minivan, mobile ordering, Misadventure Falls, Hurricane Irma, Open Table. Any uh, comments, thoughts, um, feelings on significance or impact of any of those? I'm hoping they add uh, discounts for the mobile ordering at some point for, you know, annual pass or Tables in Wonderland or something like that. You mean an an additional discount just for using the open, the the mobile ordering system? No, I mean that... at least when I was there and they were first oh, so that you can tap yeah. into. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause you can't now use your normal discounts when you're mobile ordering. Gotcha. So is there a, is there a limitation with the, the mobile ordering? Is it, is it geolocated or like, does you have to be in the park with an activated ticket or can you be outside the park? Nope. You can be outside. Yeah. That's interesting. But you're, I mean, you're charged when you put your order in. Um, no, I mean, I think I, I'm still a little bitter that the minivans don't come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know luber is launching in 2018 so i'm all over that <laughs> tell luber to have a car seat it's available um, i'm just mad that somebody yeah, owns yeah. that domain by the way i cannot believe that like i'm closer to magic kingdom than epcot is why won't the minivan come to my house but anyway so um no i, I love the minivans i think i think the transportation stuff is exciting like what's happened this year with transportation with the minivans and like what's coming going forward with the gondolas and you know that good stuff is is great um i thought irma was so beautifully handled it was like a month after we moved here and i just loved seeing how everybody came together i got amazing pictures of epcot sort of all saran wrapped um you know, le- you know, right, right before they closed up. Um, but the mobile ordering, like if anybody is listening to this, who's just planning a trip and has small children, I am in the parks all day, you know, multiple times a week with two small children. And I cannot tell you what a lifesaver mobile ordering is. You can put, you can go into the app, you go, you select the, the venue that you want to be eating from that offers it. You can put your order in. If you're planning on, for example, going to Animal Kingdom for the day with your family, you can put your order in first thing in the morning, like while everybody's still getting ready in the resort hotel room, um, first thing in the morning, you can put your order in while you've got a moment of quiet time. And then when you're ready to eat, when you're near the 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 venue, be it Satoli Canteen or, or whatever it is, you can say, you know, prepare my food now. And then within usually five to 10 minutes, they'll tell you that your food is ready. Um, you know, they, they, they just put it through on whatever card you have put on your account. And there's, there's no better feeling than like walking by that huge queue <laughs> mm-hmm. at Satoli Canteen and just going to pick up your food with your, with your kids. Um, Cause it is, it's hard. I mean, as, as a, as a, you know, as a mom of two small children who is in the parks frequently, I feel that difficulty of like waiting in line at a crowded park, quick service restaurant with your two kids sort of pulling on you and you can't get your table yet and you're juggling your food. And it, it is mobile ordering is, is just such a smart addition. Um, you know, to, to, it, I mean, it's, it's great for anybody, but for somebody who's, who's sort of juggling a big family, um, you know, and trying to make things as easy as possible. I, I can't say enough about, you know, mobile ordering, like figure it out before you leave, look on your app, like kind of figure out how it works because it will make your day so much easier. Um, and they're, they're expanding so much. So it started out with just Satoli and I think Pizza Fari had it, but now it's all over, you know, multiple restaurants at, at all the parks. 
So I really appreciate that, that they're looking at ways of making things more convenient and easier so that you're not waiting in line when you don't have to, if there's ways around it and uh, getting you know, people out of the queue and get the food in their hands and to get all the, the payment, make it easier. So you're not running around with cash in your pockets. Uh, I love that they are th- forward thinking like that. And hopefully we'll see it in other, other ways around the Disney world as well. Yeah. yeah I think that's key. Like the, that whole expansion with the mobile app and, and embracing the fact that families use them uh, more and more and not as a distraction in the park now, but as a, as a helpful tool, that's great that they're continuing to expand that whole idea. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see um, how that continues and changes. And obviously, uh, you know, we're talking about transportations, um, excited for how that is going to be altered as we um, uh, look forward to the um, I keep wanting to, I keep wanting to call them the Skyway buckets. The Skyliner is coming in. Um, <laughs> I keep wanting to say the buckets in too. 2018. Um, All right. I do. Go ahead. I was going to ask, um, anybody figure out if that's going to have any windows on it or air conditioning? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I will not go in a bu- Don't worry. You, it will be absolutely air conditioned and, and you'll be perfectly comfortable. All right. Just, just want to make sure because, you know, the Internet is telling me something completely different. But it's going to be interesting to see how <laughs> that is utilized by guests differently. And what I mean by that is I think the Skyliner is going to be not just a conveyance and a transportation system, but it's going to be an attraction for people yeah. because of yeah, where it, it is going to, you know, people are going to get on the Skyway, the Skyliner, and just go ride it. They're just going to go ride, I mean, as somebody, that's what I plan on doing with it. Um, and I just, I just want to put the, the the flag in right now that I'm going to call it buckets. It's just always going to be the buckets. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to put the buckets down. It's going to be called the, the buckets. <laughs> they actually had food on, like if they had like a little snack oh, stand at bucket. each of the stations so I could eat, oh. so I could snack on my Skyliner. Oh, that if would we be could nice. like cater a whole thing with like a, a mini bar. Becky wants it like her own deluxe. Bucket. She wants a Skyliner deluxe with like a concierge yeah. lounge and a, and a butler and a bar. <laughs> slow down think it's, about it it's, think about it like you know in, in the the london eye or in the eye in las vegas you can like get your little capsule and you can have a mobile bar on board come on it's gonna be like one pink princessy gondola <laughs> no it won't be <laughs> pink. no pink this girl don't do pink man um, <laughs> i, I want to just i want to quickly I, i'm going to venture out of world just for a minute and and sort of follow me as i as i circle back because I do want to touch on, and, and we could do a, you know, believe me, a completely separate show about um, the other parks and land and cruise line. But I think it's significant to mention the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout opening at Disney California Adventure. In terms of that, there's a lot of things about that. In terms of, you know, the uprising when people heard that they were closing it and bring Guardians in to that OMG, it is the most fun ride I've ever been on. We need to ride it nine times in a row. I see people, who, I see you guys are smiling because you know exactly that feeling that that uh, attraction gave to you. And I think that was the word that was continually used. It's a party and a ride. It is. It's a party ride. Yes. It's, a, it's not <laughs> even it's an attraction. It's, it's a passage of joy, then, then yes. this is party. It is a party was, ride. You where people used to go into the Tower of Terror and and feel foreboding and and feel kind of scared and not sure what's going to happen. This you are whisked into there. You sit down. The music starts. You are excited and out of your seat almost. And you are um, excited when the first notes of the song come on. And you realize you haven't done this song yet. <laughs> it's Unless you're me and you can hit me with your best shot six yeah. times. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that's bad timing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm only missing one. I'm only missing the Elvis song. Because um, right, there is like a chaser. There's like a chaser song yeah. that, that is r- more rare than others. Yeah, and you you get when the ride is done, everybody in the car is is laughing and high fiving each other and getting off the ride to go look at their picture and then realizing I got to go again because I need the next song. And I walked off that the first time I went. This is a party and a ride, and I want to ride it all night long. I want to go over and over and over. And I so enjoy that attraction. It is my favorite in uh, California Adventure right now. And that, the fact that it's your favorite, I'm happy that you qualified right now because obviously with yep. the changes <laughs> that are coming there, uh, again, I believe 
not just what has been announced, but what has not been announced. And we can touch more on this on the 2018 speculation show. But I will tell you that, you know, I got two words for you and they're more and Marvel and you can sort of put them yeah. together. And that's what I believe is coming there. Um, I did want to just mention quickly Disney Cruise Line. Obviously, at D23 Expo, we got um, uh, the reveal that nobody saw coming of a another ship coming. So now we have new ships coming in 21, 22, and 23. So you can start to plan your vacations out accordingly. But I had an opportunity to visit the Disney Dream in November to see specifically the new Beauty and the Beast show, which... I will tell you is remarkable. Uh, I, I was I was a theater guy like way back when, at, I, and you will never see the tapes of anything that exists. But from the front of the stage to imagining how it's put together backstage, that show is spectacular. It's the second best reason to go on a Disney cruise behind the food. So it's food, Beauty and the Beast, and then everything else because that it is. Incredible! It, I I got teared up, and it's a it's a classic retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story with just enough of uh, a, an addition and a little bit of a modern twist to it to um, to appeal to I think all audiences. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's the best show on any ship anywhere, hands down. But I agree. Lou, Lou, when you say that, though, could you just describe what you mean by beautiful? Do you mean by the – is it everything like the sound, the characters? Or did, are they doing something visually that you, you visually. wouldn't expect to be so – Oh, really? The okay. costuming, the mm-hmm. sets are – and I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it. And, and don't watch any videos ahead of time. But the sets are alive. And the way that they transition scenes and bring these scenes to life using not just physical props but – what looked to be almost 3D, 3D digital scenery is just beautiful. It's captivating. It is, it is it's, absolutely it's stunning. captivating. Yeah, it is worth for, for people who are wondering, you know, I want to go on a, on a cruise. That show could draw you to that cruise line and to that ship. It is yeah. that amazing. And I would see it twice yep. if I could. I was say, if, they showed the it, if they showed it twice, like uh, uh, two, two different days, because I can't miss dinner because – Hi. Um, <laughs> but if they showed it on two days, I would go see it twice. Yeah. Is that good? So before you, you, um, you missed something about Disneyland that can I go back to really fast just to mention? Yeah. One thing that they did this year for 2017, they haven't done before. They kind of upped the game in terms of their Halloween, um, presentations and what they're doing for Halloween. They, they made it a lot more edgy. Over at California Adventure, not not you know like the people across the the way edgy, but somewhere in the middle, it wasn't Mickey's not so scary, but it was something just a little bit more foreboding and daunting and and a little scarier mixed in with a little happiness over at um, at Radiator Springs too. But I can see and I was kind of told that that if it was popular this year and it really was that they would maybe look to move a little bit more towards that side and the things in, in terms of the characters that they have out, the decorations, Oogie Boogie out there talking to everybody in the Esplanade. It went over so well and it had nothing but really good reviews from people that, that I spoke with. And it's nice to see that they're kind of taking um, Halloween to another level out on the West coast. And again, not to sort of uh, go off on a tangent, but more akin to what we saw in the Asian parks, when we were yeah. there, and, oh, and yeah. especially well, there was a, that. yeah, there was definitely a few things that um, that were more on the the scary and unique side um, there. But again, unique I don't want to word, yeah, yeah. But we did three or four shows about it, so I don't want to, um, yeah, I don't want to rehash that because I do look. We do need to get to obviously what is was the the monumental is 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 a bit of an understatement when uh, as had been rumored for weeks, if not months before on December 14th, the Disney company announced that they acquired 20th century Fox uh, at a, a d- discount price. I say that somewhat tongue in cheek <laughs> of 52.4 billion. That's a B dollars in stock. 
and I, I want to very much get your take on this, but I believe this to to say is monumental is is um, is very much an understatement. I think this continues to add to Bob Iger's legacy of acquisition since she came into this company in 2005. Pixar in 2016, Lucas and Star Wars in 2012. Again, at a like it sounds like pennies when he said he only paid four billion for it, uh, and then Marvel as well. But I think unlike the Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars deals, the acquisition of Fox is not just about the the legacy content and the current content. It's going to change the way we consume content. Let me explain. Oh yeah. Yes. Movie theaters are already in trouble. Like, it's it's a fact. Uh, I, there's still something beautiful and special and romantic about going to see it in a, a film in a theater. But with Disney and Fox deal, it, there it's double trouble than what it was before. Um, I think what beyond just the the movie theaters, it's even going to be how we consume at home because it's very easy that Disney can start to take some of that Fox content away from places like Netflix and places like HBO because Disney is quadrupling down on their upcoming streaming service, which right. is going to cut out those theater operators entirely. Is it a Netflix killer? Absolutely not because I think Netflix has been seeing what is coming and, and that competition is coming for a long time, which is why they started getting into the original content game, which has been doing incredibly well. And as long as they keep on doing that, they'll be able to sort of stay toe to toe with Disney. If I'm yeah. HBO, I'm a lot more nervous than I would be if I was Netflix. But if you think about what Disney is getting, we'll talk about some of the specifics. Disney is also getting Fox's stake in Hulu, right, which has an equal stake, I think, along with Comcast. So now with a majority stake in Hulu, Disney's going to change the way streaming is going to happen, which is the way a lot of us and some cord cutters are consuming their content. But let's look at what else Disney gets. And the, the first one I mentioned, because it's actually quite significant, especially now with Last Jedi coming out, Disney now has all the rights to the original Star Wars, which they didn't have before. Fox had the distribution rights to Episode Four: A New Hope in perpetuity. I say nay nay. We also get Deadpool, which Disney has said they will continue to do the right way. Good. Fantastic Four. Finally, they can get that right. X-Men. Uh. Expect a <laughs> reboot in 2020-21. Planet of the Apes. Ooh. Kingsman, which I love, by the way. Yes. Predator. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Die Hard, Home Alone, <laughs> Night at the Museum. Let's switch to the small and mobile screen. A little thing known as The Simpsons, Family Guy, <laughs> Bob's Burger, Futurama, King of the Hill, X Files, The Gifted, which is based the the TV show based on the X Men, American Horror Story, and then the massive back catalog. Like, and when I say back catalog, I don't mean just in films, but TV. Like current and long term back catalog, 24, Buffy, Hill Street Blues, MASH, Mary Tyler Moore, kids, look it up. Um, the Shield, <laughs> the list goes on and on and on. Like, I thought Iger couldn't have done anything bigger or better than what he did. And I, I, I say he collectively, he did with Marvel and Lucasfilm. I mean, this is and and Lisa, I know like we're speaking your language. You were a mergers and acquisition attorney. You were probably just so ha sad you couldn't get your hands dirty in some yeah. of that paperwork. <laughs> but yeah. this is, I mean, this is look acquiring the the Marvel the the five thousand Marvel characters, obviously incredibly significant. We won't know the long term effect of that for five, ten, twenty years. The same thing for Star Wars, but this is going to have an impact today. And this is going to be the thing that history is going to look back on in the entertainment industry as the most significant deal ever. And I, and I don't, I mean, if you think that I'm overstating, please, I, I welcome discussion from anybody on it. 
I, I, I completely agree with that, Lou. I mean, I, one of the things I think is also really interesting, now that you're framing it up that way, is the streaming piece, period. So if you look back through this year, Disney was more engaged than years before, probably because of the technology getting better, but they were scream, streaming more live events. And if if you're not living 12 minutes from the gates of the Magic Kingdom, you thrive on those type of events. And now if they have the... <laughs> Two. <laughs> Sorry. But I, I, I think... <laughs> I think that I think that this is that's that's another significant piece to all this is like they're going to be able to reach in through their own content platform now and provide experiences in ways that they've never been able to do. And it's all going to be, you know, interwoven with everything you just laid out. And well, they have the land for to do whatever they want. And when you said Die Hard and some of those other franchises that are just so much Hollywood, Mm -hmm. it just started to make me think maybe Hollywood Studios shouldn't go away. Maybe it should stay. And maybe maybe they expand on that in some weird way. I don't know. I mean, of course, you have Galaxy's Edge and and, and Pixar there, but wow, it, it just that's huge. And what's their relationship still with ABC? Is it still that's still in place? That, correct. That's, Disney still owns ABC. Oh, huge, huge. <laughs> I think the only missing piece from that, and obviously, I want to give you guys a, a chance to chime in because Lisa has eleven pages of notes. The only <laughs> missing piece to this, because look, this is. I think, you know, we talk about disruptive technologies. This, like, this expands the, the speed of disruption exponentially. The only piece of this deal that I think is missing that is something that will come in the future is Disney um, getting rid of, of the albatross that is ESPN, which currently is hemorrhaging money. I think they will, in, I will even say in 2018, <laughs> 2019, they will get rid of the sports section of the 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 Walt Disney Company, it should be sold to a company like a Fox or a CBS. Let them do what they do best, get out of the sports slash entertainment area and focus on what Disney does well. And you want to talk about you know they're they're wanting to and, and Iger continuing to increase his direct to consumer strategy um this is you know this is something i think that's unprecedented Hmm. as long as they leave deadpool alone i'm good and they will but excellent (laughs) you know that they have also they're casting an actor for wolverine to put into infinity war oh (sighs) okay I think you're right, Lou, about it impacting the streaming side. I also can't help but wonder how is this going to impact the uh, theme park side, especially in Orlando, where now Disney owns Marvel and The Simpsons, two of Universal's biggest lands. I have been saying for quite some time, even before this deal, that I I believe that once Disney acquired Marvel – the folks um, down the street were figuring, all right, we need to somehow – look, I, I think it makes sense for Universal to offload the Marvel presence in their parks. Why? There's two mm-hmm. major reasons. One, if I'm Universal, I sure don't like having to open up my books to Disney to pay them whatever the royalty type or licensing agreement is there. Two, they only have access to characters as they exist – existed – in the comic right. books. Exactly. So you yeah. will never see spider You will never see the version of Spider-Man or the X-Men or anybody else that kids and adults are seeing in 2017 going forward. You're not going to see limited. that same Wolverine. Right. You're very limited. So now all of a sudden there is a sense of relevance of those characters that is not going to be there. Universal also is like Walton in 1953 was limited when he was looking for land to by, by size. They can only expand so far and they are pushing maximum density right now. You get rid of that Marvel land and yeah, maybe even the Simpsons that opens up a lot more land for them to do things like bring in the Nintendo property, which they acquired years ago. I believe in my little web slinging heart of hearts that that is going to happen within the next three to five years i i 
tend to agree with you because I, I they're limited at this point and there's confusion. And I'm with you that they probably don't want to open up their books and show Disney across the street what's going on. And at this point, it does to start to make sense that they kind of need to move on with the uh, the properties that they have under their thumb. And it's not like they've got some little ones between Nintendo and, of course, the Harry Potter thing, which took off like a shot. They've got other opportunities over there as well. So it would just make sense for everybody, and hopefully they can nail out an agreement and and let it go. So um, m and A, I, I'd like to hear your, uh, your opinions on what is, you know, Again, no, I mean, I've I've been quiet because I think, you know, what what everybody is saying is, you know, mirrors my own thoughts. I mean, it, for if, you know, for the multitude of people listening that don't know, I I was a uh, Wall Street mergers and acquisitions attorney who quit and moved to Disney World. <laughs> All the cool attorneys are doing it. So, just saying. <laughs> but I, but no, I mean, these 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 50 billion dollar deals were what I did, Um, you know, so these numbers aren't aren't you know, aren't strange to me They're They are what they are. Um, you know, and I've had many a conversation with many a naysayer since this has been announced. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, mergers can be a beautiful thing. You know, a a merger basically means that somebody could use it better and somebody's money was worth more, you know, and, and they made the trade. Um, and, and that's what a merger means. Um, and that's what happened here. And I, and I look forward to seeing what Disney, does better with the long, long, beautiful list of things um, <laughs> that they have acquired. I am so, so excited to see these franchises in the right hands. Um, Fantastic Four and Deadpool and X-Men and Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Die Hard and The Simpsons. I mean, I just like putting them into the hands of, of, of Disney. I'm so, so excited to see what, you know, what, you know, what they do better um, you know, with, with, with these, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, needless to say, when the deal was announced, I was the first person on Edgar, like pulling up the agreements and pouring over them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it, this is, I mean, it, this is, you know, that's as, as much as I deny it, it, it's still my blood. Um, you know, and, 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 and I, and I love to read the deals and I, you know, I, I, I probably missed my, my old job for the first time, <laughs> 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 the, you know, when they came out with the details of it. Um, but, but, you know, but, you know, bygones be bygones and, and I'm on the outside of it now reading in and, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm incredibly excited for all the same reasons that everybody else is. And, you know, and, and, and sort of, you know, I, I don't, I don't have the same heebie GB reaction to mergers that, that some people do. Um, um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited to see what, um, you know, what these, these various universes, um, become in the hands of the, of the right owner. Yeah, so, I, because I think you know we we talk about sort of the 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 low hanging fruit, the the Deadpool's and the X Men and and some of that kind of stuff. But if you think about just how much, even the current stuff they're acquiring. So Fox Television Studios has just under forty series currently in production. Again, yeah. not the least of which is things like The Simpsons and Modern Family, yeah. whatever. But they're also getting the Foxes. Um, chain of regional cable networks that's dedicated to sports, including things like Yes Network. So I think what Disney is also doing is they're padding what their potential offering is going to be when they are ready to offload something like ESPN, because it's going to be, look at all of the sports stuff that we're going to be able to sell to whoever it's going to be. But they also get FX Network. They get National Geographic. They get, and again, if you're overseas, this may be more impactful for you, Sky of Britain and Star of India, which are the monster TV service providers over there. So I think what what Disney is doing is this strategic goal of not just domestically, but internationally looking to dominate not just necessarily traditional media, but the progressive media in terms of streaming. And and I come to find out because I always wonder when things like this happen, especially when the Marvel and the Lucasfilm, I'm like, is Bob Iger just sitting around on a Sunday afternoon and picks up the phone and calls George Lucas or did he call like, you know, Stanley that, that literally sort of how this deal happened. Um, From what I understand, Iger and Murdoch were at um, Murdoch's. He has a, a winery in Bel Air and they're just talking about technology and the media business and how it comes to be. And I just sort of gets in his car. He's like, huh, I wonder if this guy would be open to a merger discussion. And he called him like a couple of weeks later in August 
to talk about more serious things? And he's like, sure, let's, let's get together, make it happen. And then they start chatting in New York. And the next thing you know, Disney buys Fox. Which All about is, relationships. It's amazing. Conversations how, never hurt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how that happens. So that's cool. You know, one, one thing though, too, you know, as you as you frame it up again, Lou, like with the, obviously they've captured the one audience, which is us. And and I was going to ask Lisa how much your young your young guys because I think you have the youngest group um, in the household right now and like are they at- what kind of what are they attaching to these days because we we all grew up on the Star Wars and we all grew up on the Simpsons and all these things but so we're all bookend on the other end. They're also, it looks like, making very good inroads in trying to grab that next generation, which may be a lot different than us. And that'll be interesting to see what creative elements start to get their attention as they grow older. And that will Disney have that ability to to absorb it. Does it make sense? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, Again, this is going to be something that it's going to be interesting to see how it sort of plays out once it's approved and once it starts to take place in the relative short term and then long term looking back on um, probably in ways and in, in technology that we can't even fathom at this point. Right. And Fred, Fred, I think on uh, going off that comment, even thinking back over this past year with the introduction of on the Disney Channel and lots of new TV shows, the, I think there was the, the Tangled show started. The reintroduction of uh, DuckTales, which I actually was excited about. and <laughs> I've seen some of the cartoons. Um, and I know it had a huge booth at D23 that had hour-long lines at all times of the day. Um, so I think it does seem like they are still focusing heavily on their new TV content uh, geared towards children. That's good. So they were letting you jump into the pile of gold. <laughs> <laughs> That was so much fun. We were pretending to be Rupert Murdoch, just jumping into his $54 billion. <laughs> if we would have known that we know now, we could have like cosplayed as Rupert Murdoch and pretend that we were dump- jumping into his pile of, of, into his pile if of gold. If only. Listen, we can continue to talk about not just this deal, but there's so much more that happened. Um, we didn't even touch on... You know, Expo. We didn't talk on the ABD. We didn't talk about some of the things. And because we did do full shows on that. And, and there's a couple of moments I, I do want to hit as we start to wrap up. But I would be remiss if we didn't talk about some of the losses that we have. Um, and when I say losses, I don't just mean the cheeseburger spring roll, the buffalo chicken slider, the Cheshire cat cupcake, and the Mickey shaped kick. <laughs> cheesecake and the pot roast mac and cheese uh, top 10 things that my videos killed in 2017 but we obviously had a lot of losses as well and i mean uh, personal losses uh marty sklar uh, in july exitensio in september um some other ones that i think don't get um a mention when we think about their disney connection is don rickles back in april um john hurt was in black cauldron and he was also the narrator of the tigger movie and Miguel Ferrer, you're like, what? How? He was Sean Yu in Mulan, and he was also Vice President Rodriguez in Iron Man 3. And he passed. And I loved, I, I loved Miguel Ferrer as an actor, so I was sad to see him pass. Um, I, I'm, in terms of my top five snacks that have de- de- departed the earth in 2017, um, I think it might be the cheeseburger spring roll or the buffalo chicken slider. That I'm most sad about. So the I may pot never roast ever... mac and cheese deserves a moment of silence because that really <laughs> rocked. <laughs> Pour um, one out. Pour one out for the pot roast mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but I do let's sort of quickly touch on some WW radio related moments from 2017. Um, we talked about uh, D23 Expo uh, it, as chaotic and stressful and everything else it is. Being on that show floor, the the Oreo cookie, the black and white cookie coming together of WW Radio and Mouse Fan Travel <laughs> on the show floor is always so much fun. Um, we have a great time. It's exhausting, but I, I love every part of the expo. This year we added another um, another layer on top of uh, the the expo experience where I launched the inaugural Disneyland quest. Um, yes, there is a Disney world quest coming in the future. And this was a full day 
And I'm going to start, I, I can't look at the video because I'm going to start getting dirty looks um, from the people who participated in it. But it was a full day quest <laughs> throughout the Disneyland park uh, where the teams of two to four people were challenged to go through and answer as many questions as they could with a a large number of them coming from Mickey's Toontown. Um <laughs> Was now was that something that you guys enjoyed? Would like to see again happen again? And why did you like? What was what made you sign up for it in the first place? So it was so much fun. I mean, I was I was ready to sign up for you know whatever you had planned, be it something else initially or that. Um, <laughs> um, no, I mean we were we were there and we were all in, and um, a friend and I did it. And I'll I'll say like my biggest rave about quest was that i had never been to disney world before disneyland obviously before um before d23 um and we i mean we didn't win we didn't come close to winning but i i mean we felt like contenders like during the course of the day um and it, it i i think the way that you that you did the the scavenger hunt the way that you you know approached the questions made it something that could be entered um, and enjoyed by somebody who, you know, had Disneyland as their sort of home park and spent, you know, huge parts of their lives there or somebody that never been there before. Um, the nature of the questions was, was, was just like that. And I kind of, you know, we, it was, like I said, it was my first time to Disneyland. We, you know, we kind of, you know, made the most of, of the time that we had while we were there, you know, obviously, you know, leaving time for the full days of D23 um, and I, I think I left Disneyland feeling like I knew more about that park than I ever otherwise would have having done quest. <laughs> um, we just, we just had fun. Like it was just, it was fun. I mean, yet did we spend a lot of time in Toontown? Yeah. Like we kind of, <laughs> but that was deliberate because I knew you didn't spend a lot of time in Toontown. I wanted you to spend more time <laughs> trying to find some of the things that you probably had never noticed before. Well, I'd never been to Disneyland before, so there was quite a lot I'd never noticed before. But but no, I mean, seriously, though, like, I, I mean, we, we joke about Toontown, but like the way that you approached the questions for the scavenger hunt made it fun, whether it was your home. Like, I would enjoy doing quests like at Epcot here, even though I, you know, and I, and I spend a ton of time there, obviously. Um, but I also enjoy doing quests, very much enjoy doing quests in Disneyland, having never been there before. And I credit you for you know, crafting questions that made that the case. Um, so I would definitely like say to anybody, you know, the, the next time that you, that you prepare a quest, I would say to anyone, you know, thinking about joining it, you know, even if you don't know the parks as well as somebody who spends a lot of time there, um, you're still going to have a good time participating in it. Um, Cause that was certainly my, my situation at Disneyland. Why didn't you win? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't win because this is where you blame your teammate who's not on the call. <laughs> my well, first of all, my teammate has a beloved Gertie dinosaur <laughs> that was lost in the midst of quest. <laughs> so we did spend some time looking for that. Um, no, I mean, I, I I didn't go in expecting to win. Um, you know, and and we played by the rules, and we sort of <laughs> so, we sort of were. We sort of were under the impression that we weren't allowed to talk to cast members, even though that wasn't the case. Um, so we thought that they were trying to entrap us when they kept because <laughs> people kept coming up to us being like, are you doing a scavenger hunt? Like, do you need help? And we totally thought they were trying to, like, entrap us into into asking questions <laughs> when um, when they were just like nice people. Trying to <laughs> you could read Lisa, to Lisa's them. conspiracy theory blog over at um... <laughs> It was all a big, I got all the cast members in Disneyland together, like, listen, all right, we're trying, well, I want you guys to try and entrap people so they can be disqualified. Um, <laughs> Father Christopher, you know, did you? I, you were I, like totally surprised, right? When you walked up to us on Main Street, like we actually had answers correct. You seemed like, you seemed legit surprised. No, I was happy. I was, because I didn't, remember, as the person who writes the questions, it's hard for me sometimes to gauge how difficult they might be, what the expertise or skill level is. So I'm sort of going in trying to see, because I, I look, my goal was to try and make you not necessarily not finish, but certainly not finish, you know, in an hour. And then like, yikes, because I, I did not make them challenging enough. So there was 200 and what was it, 250, something like that. 
Well, you and Becky would have both had big problems if there were multiple people with all the questions, right? So. Well, I had, I had, yes. I had, no, we wouldn't have because this isn't my first, really? this is not my first at bat. I've done these for, uh, for 14 years. So I had multiple tiebreaker um, games and questions ready in case there, I was prepared. So there would have only eventually been one winner. Eventually, like uh, t- two days later. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold your, whoever can hold their hand on this car the longest without taking it off. And then I'll just come back in a week and see who's still sitting there. Um, Father Christopher, you and your team of four participated. You, you were the, the grim grinning ghost, correct? We were, uh, cause we didn't stand a ghost of a chance. Um, <laughs> and it was great. Uh, we really enjoyed it. I will admit, I thought you were absolutely crazy. Uh, when I realized this was scheduled for Disneyland's actual anniversary date, um, with the large crowds, but it ended up actually being the perfect thing to be doing on the anniversary. Cause while everyone else was standing in line for an hour to ride a ride, uh, we were exploring the park and doing other things. It worked out, uh, especially well since we've been able to add a little bit extra time and got to see Becky in her natural habitat of Disneyland. And oh, I, thought you meant, I thought you meant the bar. <laughs> Uh, I did was get to see all of the uh, music for the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, ride, but uh, the scavenger hunt really became kind of like the highlight extension of of the trip because we were able to spend time looking at a lot of the little details, like Lisa said, that wouldn't have paid attention to, um, especially just being not having Disneyland at the home park. It's easy to get. Uh, mesmerized by the bigger things and the bigger pictures, which is great, but it was also important, I think, that the scavenger hunt helped to focus in on some of the smaller details that mirror some stuff at Disney World, uh, but also set Disneyland apart. Like, did you have that satisfying moment when you realized that the graves, the gravestones were at the shooting gallery and not at Haunted Mansion? I had that moment. <laughs> there were a <laughs> lot of those, uh, a lot of those that uh, realized stuff, and then. Uh, hindsight looking at things and going, why did we waste so much time listening to a phone? Uh, so there was lots of little things, uh, uh, learning curve that took place. I look forward to doing another one in the future, um, whether back in Disneyland or Disney World or Disney Springs or something like that. But I think it was a, it was a great event um, to be done on such a busy day. Okay, listen, the, the, the goal was for everybody to have fun first and foremost and not be mad at me at the end. I mean, I understand you were probably cursing me out on the way through, but then when you finally handed in, <laughs> a lot of that anger seemed to have dissipated just a little bit. So I, I appreciate that. And I am planning additional quests for the future. So stay tuned. This is where Becky goes. You didn't tell me when is don't worry. I got, I'll let you know. Um, <laughs> but there was a lot of other things that happened to, um, collectively it for WW radio and and personally uh, we didn't even talk about the double dip cruise that we did in june which i just loved so much and again we talked about our um the abd um i personally the you know i i other parts of of everything i do expanded to more i i spoke a lot more i was in i was I spoke in San Diego. Um, I got snowed in at St. Vincent's in Pennsylvania. I was supposed to go to Jerusalem to speak, um, but I had a conflict, which would have been interesting. Um, I was in Georgia, um, Minnesota. Um, I Thanks to all of you, I was privileged to be able to speak to uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation in uh, in Arizona in, um, uh, in October. And then, of course, we had our second annual momentum event in uh in walt disney world which i know fred and lisa are repeat offender uh, repeat attendees uh to and that will be returning and then some in uh in 2018 so i'll have announcements about that soon um i did have and i would love for you and maybe not even whether you know them off the top of your head or quickly looking and i'll and i'll stall to give you some extra time I, look the show has always been the 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 nucleus of what I do. It's still my favorite thing that I do, although I really love doing the live video stuff as well. Um, here's some of my favorite shows from 2017, and if you're a new listener, these are ones you might want to go back to. Maybe, here you go. Here's a top 10 personal favorite shows from 2017. Uh, show 474, Secrets and Stories You Never Knew About Pirates of the Caribbean with Jim Corcus. Uh, 479, 
I interviewed Duncan Wardle, who was the former vice president of innovation and creativity for the entire Disney company and a speak a keynote speaker at Momentum. He just has fascinating stories. I heard from more than one person at Momentum that he could have just gotten up on stage and just spoken all day long uh, because he had so much um, energy and insight to share. Uh, I loved going backwards as well as forwards. So on show 481, not long after the opening of Pandora, we looked at Beastly Kingdom, which was the Walt Disney World that never was what should have been where Pandora currently sits now. Uh, it took me this long to get to food. I love, love, love Geyser Point over at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. We did a, a live review out there in May. Um, Lisa's giving me the hairy eyeball. She's like, that's another place that I haven't been to as yet. Um, going back to Disneyland on show 483, 10 Secrets You Never Knew About Disneyland, 488, um, maybe bookending the keynote speakers at Momentum. I did 20 questions with Lee Cockrell, who was um, an executive at Walt Disney World, and he's another guy who I could just listen to him talk all day, not just sharing stories about Disney, but stories about entrepreneurship and business and just life um, at Disney. Show 492 was one that I waited years to do, and I'm happy I did because I had Jeff Bam come on and join me to talk about Disney's Haunted Mansion, the history's secrets and stories, um, and we will go back and revisit the second part of that soon. Top 10 corny, nostalgic, and sentimental things we still love about Walt Disney World was 494. The Lost Parades of Disney World was a, a sleeper show. Jim Corcus was like, who wants to hear about the parades? And yet it's one we still get a lot of feedback on. And I really loved uh, show 501, which was 10 things you didn't know about Walt Disney, because we talk about the person and the persona. But I think there's so many stories that people don't know about the man. And just because I'm Lou Mangello, here's an honorable mention. Um, show 478, a hidden treasure of Walt Disney World was late night dining at Sanaa Lounge, which is still <laughs> one of my favorites. Bread service for days. Um, if any of you remember or have done the Google quick enough, has was there any show that I did in 2017 that you remember, that you enjoyed, maybe even shared with a buddy? Every email show. Uh, there it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed your holiday episode, Lou. You didn't mention that. I, you know, I it was on the honorable mention list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what show number was that? Five hundred two. Yeah, that was that was that's a good one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the the up, the one that jumped to mind that I had a lot of fun with, and uh, I think all I have to do is I don't think I could do it as well as you, Lou. But it's hey, ladies. Um, and, and, <laughs> And I will be scarred, as it was said. So that was number 498 with Tim, the top 10 things we love about Spaceship Earth. That was a really good one, too. And you'll never look at that person ever the same way again, right? Never. It will, the, contem will. The, the contemporary one was good, too, 485. Um, oh, was it like top 10 things you didn't know about? Like secrets and stories okay. about the contemporary? Um, and obviously, Duncan Ward only Cockrell. I could listen to them talk all day. Those were those were on my list as well. I think you could also do a spinoff of that. Going back to the one I just brought up too, they were put, I, I made note of <laughs> when uh, uh, the conversation about the Phoenicians. That was uh, <laughs> that that was that was that was priceless. The Phoenician <laughs> debate rages on. Yes. yes. Yeah, the uh, Duncan Wordle and Lee Cockrell interviews. I love the Jim Corcus episodes, all of those. I always learn so much from those, uh, from the history standpoint. Um, and then I also had written down, I think, every single one of your food episodes. So from <laughs> Sonata, to Planet Hollywood, to Tuli Canteen, Paddlefish, Morimoto. Morimoto, uh, yeah, Morimoto was so good. Animal Kingdom, uh, Animal Kingdom Lodge, the Mara. Um, so the uh, your live dining reviews, I always find somewhere new that – I either need to eat or at least if I've been there, <laughs> something new that I need to try. So, I really liked, uh, and not that I was there, but the 500th was really fun because there was a whole collection of characters in one place live talking about things and also getting to ask you questions and hearing your answers to some of the things that, that people wanted to know. So that was one of my favorites. Yeah. 
There's what? another one. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. The uh, there was a video. Um, I, th- I think it was a live stream, but it was with Becky uh, out of Disneyland at the Cozy Cone, and oh, you were enjoying a chili con carne. <laughs> That that was that was, that was another yeah that was a good one. <laughs> was that the water fight? I think the water I fight. Think so. up I think so. No, yeah. that was when when it, it started off with "Don't ruin this moment for me." <laughs> <laughs> I think I As might all have video had. Should. I might have had three cones that night. You did because I think I had the chili and then I had the chicken yes. verde and then somebody didn't uh-huh. finish theirs and I right right all right don't yeah, judge were... me. <laughs> I don't get there that often. Research. Research purposes only. I know. We need to go back, Kate. You know what? The one I loved most of all is the lounge review that we did, like four times through 2017. <laughs> it's, we're going to make it happen in 2018. We're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, Becky. I promise you. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm going to turn the recorder off. I promise you that we will do a live a live lounge review, which we've done in the. I I will tell you, even though you were there, I love doing the two to gusto review with you. Like, how much oh, fun did we have that night? Yeah, we have to do that again. That was, that was, that was, some, that was good. That was we have to do some, gold. some dining. Yeah, that was fun. And we Especially because do... you guys have had, had, like, had a few drinks before you went live. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. It helps. We will do another lounge <laughs> review, and we will do the, dining. A, the top 10 lounges in Walt okay. Disney World. We have to do another dining review, though, too, because we do have to eat. We do. We do. We'll make that happen. And, uh, and who knows? Maybe we'll invite some, uh, some other members of the nation to join us. Be fun. <laughs> Maybe you can schedule it like in advance enough for me to get a babysitter. <laughs> or a flight. <laughs> or a flight. <laughs> or a flight. We'll have, to, uh, we'll have to do one with the nation around momentum, too, when I know some people oh, are going to be down here, too. I think, uh, I think, uh, I, think if, I mean, I know how hard those uh, quests are to put together. Um, that'd be a great thing to do at momentum. Do you cool. want to see me go to the loony bin? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to do <laughs> momentum. And remember, no. I did momentum right like. Oh, days yes. after coming back from China. No, oh, that's a hot and then mess. flew out from you Momentum to do like two more speaking engagements. Oh, that yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I flew right from Those Momentum. Make, make a wish, and um... that's right. I flew. No, to... let's. That's and right. I went to. I went to there was a little Phoenix, a little and then I went to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. There was a like little the hurricane in there too. There was well, what? he left. Yeah. He left. Well, that was the weekend right after the weekend of the hurricane. And I don't think you were the you were feeling too well either, right? I mean. <sighs> I think you you were at the edges of a cold or whatever. Yeah. Well, I remember because I landed from uh, Japan and then like four hours later, I woke up and did Epcot anniversary on October 1st. You did a a meet. I did a a, (laughs) meet. There was a live stream. Yeah. I was like the walking dead that day. And then Momentum was the week after. And then Make-A-Wish, the Bar Association Conference, Food and Wine Classic was right after that. No wonder you were cranky. And then wine and dine, <laughs> wine and dine, which we had donuts on the course for. So, wow, that was good. that's a recipe. Yeah, I remember I wasn't running; I was just cheering. So we had. Are we still recording at this point? We are. We are. <laughs> just assume um, we're not. But we are. Yeah. Um. So I want to. So I'm going to go around the horn again in the same order. I want you to tell me if you can, and this is not meant to be a list. What is or was your or the single best moment from 2017. And it can, again, it could be something personal to you. It could be Disney related. However you want to sort of frame that question. You, the greatest single moment from 2017. Lisa, Becky, Father Christopher, and Fred. Um, oh, mine's really easy. Um, I mean, mine's so personal, but it's Disney related. Um, so my, my single greatest moment was, you know, getting the key to the house, um, and looking out the bedroom window and seeing the magic kingdom fireworks on the first night after we had closed. That's, that's a very easy question to answer for 2017. And for those of you who haven't made the move yet, I've been thinking about this show for literally years. Maybe this is the year I'm going to do a show about moving to Disney Mm -hmm. because I, I'm not the only here. person who's done it, and everybody that has done seems to be much happier. And uh, for those of you who are thinking about doing it, maybe we can sort of help you through that process a little bit. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> Becky? 
Uh, mine comes in 27 parts. Um, <laughs> you get one. So, you there get was one. so much. I understand, right, well, it, but that's why we need one. 1. 1.5. 1.5. Because part of it is all, all together. It's got to be, once again, going back over to Tokyo Disney Sea, which, in my opinion, is probably the best thing Disney has ever done that's out there and we've already talked about it but part of it is seeing your face realizing that there was an entire land under the volcano (laughs) when we thought that there was like one ride under there um that was pretty amazing but i think more than anything collectively was going to a disney park and uh okay besides maybe another point two of walking into the walkthrough the marvel walkthrough and realizing it wasn't just a walkthrough and Disney telling us to run, which was amazing, but going into a Disney park or three of them that I had never seen before and didn't read about and didn't learn anything about and let the magic happen. And when you live, breathe, eat Disney as much as we do so much and we we know about it and we know exactly when you're turning left or right to get to where and you know exactly the color of carpets that's in every hotel because you have been there so many times to experience it again with fresh eyes and to go through the Disney magic that the Imagineers have created for you. And you don't even know the story, but you just get sucked into it and you are immersed in it and you walk away with that magical feeling collectively. That's my favorite thing about 2017 is that I I was lucky enough to experience that several times on, on our ABD and then uh, stopping in Tokyo and to have that feeling again of just overwhelming magic and being an eight year old again was, um, was kind of fantastic. And then watching everybody's faces on pirates in Shanghai. Yeah. Well, the question for Fred. Father, you can go first. Uh, all right. For me, it was the return of the Dole Whip pineapple <laughs> vanilla swirl. Um, <laughs> No, no, no. For me, uh, oh my god, I was so hoping you were serious. I was like, this is why we're friends. <laughs> the uh, big thing for me that I always look back as 2017 for is the trip out to Disneyland between D23, the scavenger oh. hunt, um, being able to. I've been to Disneyland before, but not frequently enough that it still very much has that newness uh, for me. Um, so I think for me, that whole trip uh, became the highlight of 2017 for me. That's my number two for what it's worth. There's a video of me going down Main Street on the double decker bus for the first time. It was was fun seeing all of you guys in Disneyland too. It was was really neat to kind of host you and uh, and see everybody there. Um, My biggest thrill was the the second parking garage in Disney Springs. I I really enjoy the way they do that. Um, That is an amazing feat. Are you a lime guy or an orange guy? (laughs) Oh, lime. (laughs) <laughs> no, right. I'll go to whichever I, one I can figure out how to get into the uh actually no mine is I guess it's 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 something that's woven and, and Lou you know I've shared this with you uh over time but this year I, I was I was fortunate enough to be recognized professionally for my teaching um but that wouldn't have been achieved if you know I hadn't been following the rules of uh Lee Cockrell who, who I you know connected with through you and then ultimately at momentum. So momentum gave me the basis and the organizational skills and the drive to focus, but ultimately also launched the stuff that I'm doing on the side now too, which is, is a lot of fun and and it follows the vein, but there's a great, it's, it's just a great ball of goo, <laughs> but it all stems from everything that you've started for all of us. So I want I just appreciate that gr- immensely. So thank you. How about you? Oh man, I was gonna try and wrap up and, and get away with nope. it. Nope. I'm not gonna let you do that. You know that. <clears throat> I mean, look, it's it's easy to pick something like Expo, to pick something like the Asia trip, um where believe it or not, Becky, when I think about the Asia trip, one of the things that I enjoyed most forget pirates, forget Tron, forget the ropes course, forget all the I, sitting down to eat like Edo style sushi in an authentic oh like God. I just I did like I felt like this warm glow growing inside me like this is exactly what I wanted and needed to do when okay, I, went I need to, to Japan. tell people this because obviously we had to wait a long time outside to, to which get Becky that does piece. not normally do 
She's not no, good at the waiting thing. But what was amazing is that every like few minutes when he realizes it's going to be a little, little longer, a little bit, go, he looked at me and go, no, it's okay. We can just go somewhere else. We, it's all right. We, don't, we shouldn't have to wait this long. And I just looked up and I went, no, this is one of the reasons you come to Japan. So we're going to wait if it takes us four days. We're going to wait and get you into this restaurant. And you were the happiest I have ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little, you know what it is. It's the little things. It is the little thing, and maybe that, and maybe that's why I'll pick what I'll pick because it is, it's the little things. Little it's things. the yep. the the experiences most. So it's not the big thing like expo. It's not the big thing like going there or doing a cruise, and and maybe, and I don't believe that this is going to come out of my mouth. Maybe it's the five hundredth show, and it's not because we're celebrating five hundred shows. It's because everything that went into it, it was the chaos of trying to plan it and <laughs> things going wrong and improvising on the fly and making things happen and, and yeah. believe it or not, like working together with you to make sure it went the way it, it did. And then to be able to invite people into my home, because I've said since day one that you were like extended family and there's no better testament to that than saying come into my home and and share this experience with us either in person or you know virtually and even then when we were doing that there was technical issues but it all worked out like it all yeah. worked out in the end as it always does knock on wood um but it did and i think that's sort of an embodiment of of this whole journey is it it's chaotic and it's exciting and it's fun and it's about sharing like this sharing and reminiscing um, with the people that you love and the people that you are closest to, whether we have met yet or not. Um, so um, I'm not, I am not going to let myself get all sappy and weepy and sentimental, but as we sort of turn this page from 17 to 18, I will end this uh, oh so incredibly long show where it began with a quote, um, which is yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We only have today, so let us begin. And that's not from Dr. Seuss. It's from Mother Teresa, and I buy into that 100% because I think one thing that I learned about 2017 is I, I looked at this list, and I'm like, I don't, it seems like yesterday, and it seems like 10 years. It goes by so fast. So embrace and savor the moments because they go by too quickly. And Timon and Pumbaa were right. Like, put your past behind you. Like, Look forward, plan for your future, and like be present, like where you are and who you are with, because you are going to snap your fingers and it is going to be in your rearview mirror. So, I want to thank Lisa, Father Christopher, Fred, and Becky so much, not just for the show today, but for the love and the friendship and the support that you have given me. Uh, Becky, 2018 is going to mark what, 11 years or so that we have been working together and still haven't, we've come close. We still haven't killed each other yet. We haven't actually drawn blood, so Not that's yet. good. There's never yeah, been a fisticuffs, <laughs> as yet, but maybe we'll see if we, if there's going to be, I'm going to make sure it's happening live because we don't awesome. want to make sure that we share that with everybody. Video <laughs> gold, nice. I Look, I, you know, I, I say it jokingly, but it's true. I wouldn't have you here. I wouldn't work with you if I didn't, not Enjoy just picking respect, on me so much, no, yeah. I know. But listen, I pick on you like a, like my much older sister because if I didn't trust you and respect you and love and appreciate you, I certainly wouldn't recommend you to the people that are my <clears throat> friends and family. So when I tell you to go use Mouse Fan Travel, it's it is because I use, but more importantly, it's it's who I trust, and I would not. And I think that's the the greatest compliment that I can give you is that I not only respect you, but I, I trust you for something that's so important for the people that book with you. Thank you. We really appreciate that too. And, and just think, it's going to be 36 degrees on Friday morning. Just so you know. Go well, you know, we're having a nice day. Let's not talk about that yet. <laughs> that's um, a heat wave right now to me. So. <laughs> Fred Amley, again, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for coming to Momentum. Um, you do awesome stuff too. Not necessarily Disney related, but I'd love for you to, to, um, give a plug for what you do and what you do to help kids start to, or even adults start to embrace something that might turn their passion into their profession. So 
have at it. Yeah, yeah. You could find me at getmecoding.com, and I'm on Facebook and also Twitter and Instagram at getmecoding.com, where I can give you tips and tutorials on how to learn to code using some of those great tools for kids or adults. So, and or if you're a teacher and you're looking to also engage your students in a new way to teach them how to code, I'd be more than happy to help you uh, provide that uh, type of framework or environment. Just reach out to me there. And Lisa, I know you have a uh, a blog where you're combining two of your uh, loves, running and and Disney. Yeah, so um, so I I blog um, on the Castle Run dot com. Um, it's 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 sort of the 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 varied adventures, um, uh, just just regular life stuff, and and momming two kids, and sort of rewriting a life that we love here in Disney. Um, and and needless to say, I'm a runner. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm doing my first dopey, um, next weekend. Um, and I, and I blog about my, my running adventures as well. And, and we'll be, um, you know, detailing, detailing my dopey adventures there. Um, as well, I also have an Etsy shop, but called the castle run, um, on Etsy, um, at etsy.com slash shop slash the castle run, um, where I combine my three loves of, of, um, Disney running and drinking, <laughs> <laughs> Now you and Becky time. just, you and I Becky I just bonded. So just well. so you know, and, yeah. And, and by, by some miracle, I've created a business model. <laughs> no, it's. I, I mean, we do a lot of fun stuff, but um, it's it's all custom glassware for the most part. Um, and and we do you know toasting flutes and beer mugs and um, and wine glasses and coffee mugs and all that good stuff. Um, all custom. You know, much of it geared toward um celebrating you know race you race might, finish line. Have to go try some of those just to make sure they work properly. <laughs> what do you think? I know. I might have something in store for you, Becky. Becky. Ooh. Um, and, um, and I'm on Instagram as, as the castle runner, um, where you can you know, kind of see snippets of everything. So I will try and, and remember to put all of those links in the show notes and father Christopher, I assume everybody can find you, um, every Sunday at mass at. That's about as, uh, social as I get. So, <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, I appreciate, again, uh, every one of you who has uh, been here today, not just helping to record the show, but listening uh, for the entire time. Again, I am not going to get overly waxing poetic and weepy, but thank you for what has truly been my and collectively our best year ever. I have lots planned, much of which Becky doesn't know about, for 2018 ah. um, that I want to do with you and for you. So, Getting um, a little late. Ah, don't worry. We got plenty. <laughs> Becky, we got plenty ah! of time. Don't you worry. We've got plenty of time. Didn't we talk about that little that little um, sentence that you just said right there? Didn't we talk about not ever saying that ever again? I will again? leave you with this. Oh, no. I'm so the scared. best is still yet to come. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about, Montana. We have a lot to talk about. So it's all good, things. Becky. It's all good stuff. <laughs> It's time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World's history or see how well you pay attention to the details, sometimes in what you see, sometimes in what you hear. If you think you know the answer, you can enter via our online form for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So I believe an overlooked attraction at Disney's Animal Kingdom is the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, that three-eighth mile walking path where you can see different African animals and research students positioned at locations throughout the path to give information about the animals and answer some guest questions. But what you might not realize is that this opening day attraction has actually had multiple names since it opened back in April 1998. So your question last week was to tell me, what was the name of the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail when it changed from 1998 to 2016 before it reverted back to Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail? Again, thanks to the hundreds of you who got this correct, even the ones who didn't get it correct but were incredibly creative with your answers. But the right answer is that while the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail was an opening day attraction on April 22, 1998, from August 98 to May 27, 2016, it was known as 
the Pangani Forest Exploration Trail. So I took all the correct entries and a few of the really creative, funny ones and randomly selected one. And again, you're playing for my 102 ways to save money for an at Walt Disney World book, all seven of my virtual audio walking tours of the Magic Kingdom, both of which I'm keeping on sale, just $10 each at the WW Radio store. I'm also going to send you a WW Radio Magic Band 2.0 cover, some WW Radio stickers and a WW Radio pop socket stand for your phone and last week's winner randomly selected is ben legrand so ben congratulations i have your shipping out information i will get it out to you right away if you played last week and didn't win that's okay because here's your next chance to enter in this week's walt disney world trivia challenge so as part of our 2017 recap we talked about some additions and announcements and a few losses that walt disney world experienced and one of those which was a sentimental favorite for a lot of guests, was Ellen's Energy Adventure, at one time known as Ellen's Energy Crisis. And your trivia question, think about it as your final Jeopardy question this week, is to tell me, what was the final Jeopardy category that was presented to Ellen and stupid Judy? Because remember, Einstein had no money. It didn't make it to the final round. So all you need to do is tell me, what was the final Jeopardy category presented to Ellen and Judy in Ellen's Energy Adventure. You're, you have until Sunday, January 7th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern to go to www.radio.com, click on this week's podcast, use the online entry form there. I'm going to send you the book, the audio tours, the Magic Band cover, the stickers, the pop socket, and just because it is the beginning of the new year, I'm also going to send you a mystery prize from my prize closet. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show and for 2017. I cannot thank you enough. Whether this is your first time listening or you've listened throughout 2017 or going back to 2005 when I first started podcasting, I sincerely appreciate you and the time that you spend and share with me and all of us as part of our WW Radio community. I also want to thank all the members of the WW Radio Nation from 2017. Those of you who have been with me since I first started The Nation, or those of you who have first joined The Nation this week or this month, thank you so much. Your help and love and support goes such a long way to literally keeping the lights on here. And if you are not part of The Nation, want to find out more, you can visit www.radio.com slash support. It's a great way for you to not only help the show, but I'm also going to send you exclusive rewards every month. I create a new scavenger hunt from Walt Disney World and maybe elsewhere, and I send out every month to Nation members. We have a private Facebook group. We I send out personalized WW Radio Magic Band covers, logo gear, backpacks, t-shirts, monthly care packages from Walt Disney World, live video group calls every month and lots more and some special things coming in 2018. Again, to find out more and help support the show, visit www.radio.com slash support. I'd also like to invite and welcome you to be part of the WW Radio community and family and be part of and contribute to the conversations that we have over on our Facebook group. If you go to www.radio.com slash box people, that'll take you to the WW Radio box people group. If you're wondering where that name came from years ago when I first started live broadcasting, people were asking me what I was doing. I said, well, there's all these people and I'm talking to them in this box, which was my computer. The name stuck and uh, the Box People community was born. I would love for you to be a part of it, whether you lurk, comment, contribute, anything. I'd love to have you come there again. If you go to www.radio.com slash box people, please come and introduce yourself. Also, you can connect with me elsewhere on social by liking the WW Radio Facebook page at facebook.com slash WW Radio, and you can connect with me. I am at Lou Mangiello on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and on Facebook as well. As I've said from show, literally show number one, this show is for and with and by you, and I would love to have you be a part of it. So if you have a question you want me to answer on the air, you can email me, lou at wwradio.com, or better yet, be heard on the air, Call the voicemail at 407-900-9391 with a question, a comment, or just a hello from the parks. And of course, you know, as much as I love connecting and and talking with you online, I still believe, as I have since I very started this so many years ago, that nothing beats a handshake and a hug. That's why I continue to do free monthly meetups 
every month in Walt Disney World and elsewhere around the country and on cruises. Our next meet of the month is going to be this coming weekend during Marathon Weekend. It's going to be Saturday from 2 o'clock to 3.30 p.m. at the Tomorrowland Terrace in the Magic Kingdom. Anybody and everybody is welcome, whether you've been listening since day one or this is the first time listening, whether you're part of the running team, whether you're bringing the whole family or just coming solo, I welcome and invite you to this or any future meet of the month in Walt Disney World. Again, go to the WW Radio Facebook page, go to the events page there and you can find out about this and upcoming meets of the month. I also do other meetups and events, uh, not just in Walt Disney World, but on the road, especially as I travel to speak and I'll be traveling a lot more in 2018. Speaking of speaking, if I could maybe come to speak to your conference, to your event, to your school, or to your business, or work with you one-on-one to help you turn that thing that you love into that thing that you do with some personal mentoring or small group coaching, you can find out more about speaking or working together by visiting lumangelo.com. Thanks again to Becky Mankin and the entire team over at Mouse Fan Travel for an amazing 2017. No matter where you are going in the Disney or outside of the Disney world, Mouse Fan Travel is who I recommend because it's who I use and it's who I trust. And you can find them over at mousefantravel.com and go to celebrationspress.com to subscribe to Celebrations Magazine. And as always, my friend, and you are my friend. Whether we have met yet or not, you continue to demonstrate that to me so often, and I am so humbled and grateful to and for you. But all I ask, especially now as we're turning the quarter into a new year, is that if you like the show, the best thing that you can do is please help spread the word. Tell your friends about it. That's the best way to invite and welcome more people into our WW Radio family. And if you can, take just 30 seconds to rate and review the show over on iTunes. It's incredibly helpful. It's another way for us to continue to grow. And thanks to you, we have, I think, close to 1,400 five-star reviews. I want to thank some recent reviewers like Save the Rock, who says, I am a Disney pod belt holder. Thank you so much, Lou, for the incredible podcast. The level of detail and info you pack into every episode is amazing. Every week when your podcast shows up in the queue, I get that little shock of Disney excitement and joy. And the second I press play, I feel like I've been transported into the front gate of the world. It never disappoints. Thank you again for all your hard work and the positive message you are constantly sending out to the world. Billy, Billy, thank you so much, brother. And Gavish says it's fun, informative, and personal, and I thoroughly enjoy this podcast. It's a great resource for trivia, history, and park information. Lou does a great job bringing interesting topics and entertaining guests into the mix. I look forward to every episode and listen to previous ones in the interim. And WTown89 says, I love it. It is absolutely amazing stories and information about the wonderful world of Disney. I've shared this to all my Disney family and friends. Thank you. Lou Mangiello and guests do an amazing job. I can't wait to hear the next podcast. Keep going. And Ten Flint from Australia says, it is a fun listen. Lou transform his love of Disney World into a lively podcast with fellow Disney fans and the occasional Disney legend to discuss news, trivia, and history. It's a great way to prepare for your first or next trip to Walt Disney World, but also a way to recapture the feeling of being in the parks at home. Luke's passion is evident in the content he presents and also in the community of like-minded fans he's created. Thank you, Ted, but it's really that community that you guys have created. I just sort of built the hub clubhouse. You guys are the ones that populate it. Again, thanks to you and everybody else for all the reviews. If you go to www.radio.com slash iTunes, it'll show you exactly how and where you can leave a review. And finally, again, my sincere and heartfelt thanks to not just an amazing 2017, but this incredible journey, this amazing roller coaster ride that you have allowed me to experience. There's been highs, there's been lows, there's twists and turns, but I am grateful and I am smiling and I am laughing at every part of it because it is a, um, it's not just the wildest ride in the wilderness, but it is a ride I never thought that I would be on and one that I do not take for granted and I'm grateful for each and every day. And for you, you know, there's a new year that stands in front of all of us, right? It's like a blank chapter in a book that's waiting to be written. So I hope that in this year to come, you start to write the book of your life, right? The book that you want to read. And I hope that when you're you're writing it, I hope you make mistakes. Because when you make mistakes, it means you're trying new things. You're pushing yourself. You're challenging yourself. And you're living every moment to the fullest. So you've got that fresh start that you've been waiting for. January 1, 
or two is a perfect time and and an occasion to start. So if you weren't happy with your 2017, here's your chance to make a change and make a difference and go write that story, go set your goals and resolve simply to be better and spread happiness. And maybe this is the year you can take that little or big leap of faith. I hope that 2018 is your best year ever. Thank you again so much for all that you have given to me in 2017. I look forward to writing and sharing this next chapter with you. And always keep moving forward. Have a happy, healthy, delicious, and safe new year. See ya. Hey, Lou. It's Ryan Hurley. And you know what? I have never called in to the voicemail section of the show before. You know, after all these times of uh, uh, you know hanging out in the parks and everything like that, I've uh, I've never actually been a uh, been a part of the end of the show. So, no better time than now because uh, if you can hear that music behind me, it's uh, it's Tomorrowland music. It's uh, Tomorrowland background music. Of course, everybody knows that that those those dulcet tones of Tomorrowland. But uh, no, I am not in Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom. That's the difference. I am in Disneyland, but not just any Disneyland. I'm in Tokyo Disneyland. That's right. Land of the rising sun. And do you remember Bizarro Superman? This is Bizarro Magic Kingdom. You know where you are, but then at the same time, you have no clue. Uh, you know, everything looks so familiar and yet so different. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's been a blast, <laughs> um, you know, just exploring, um, it, where you've been before. It, it's, it's very strange, but, uh, very enjoyable at the same time. Uh, the park is absolutely filled to the brim. I mean, they really pack them in here. And, uh, but it's, it's been very smooth. Um, ha- yeah, having a great time and, uh, yeah, we'll have to talk, uh, we'll have to talk more soon. I'd love to, uh, be able to share all the details with you, uh, uh, uh real soon. So coming to you live from Tokyo Disneyland, this is Ryan Hurley signing off. Hey Lou, this is Drew from North Carolina. Uh, my family and I just left Hollywood Studios. Um, for the last day of our Disney vacation, um, we're heading back to North Carolina tomorrow. But, uh, you know, just want to say that we started listening to your show in about March, and um, we've learned a lot and really enjoyed it. And uh, I will say that that we had a really enjoyable experience this time around, um, you know, kind of taking some of the tips from your shows and, and looking for some of the details and things that you've pointed out and taught us through your shows. So anyways, we had a really awesome time. Uh, we're looking forward to coming back. I don't know when that'll be, but, uh, yeah, enjoy the show. Thanks so much. And, uh, I can't wait for the next show. Bye. Hi, Lou. This is Courtney from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And I am in the middle of wrapping Christmas presents. I was listening to your Guide to the Holidays podcast, and I just wanted to call and first say congratulations on your 500-plus episodes. That's an amazing milestone, and it's it's just amazing. And I love your show. Um, Also, happy 10th anniversary to WDW Radio. How cool is that? I think that's amazing. Um, You're so good at your job, and I just wanted to say thank you for – your podcast and all the information that you give out and my husband and I just got back from our trip to Disney World and I got to check off a few things off my holiday bucket list. I got to see the gingerbread house at the Grand Floridian for the very first time and I was so upset because we were there the um what was it the second week in November and they hadn't started yet and I was like oh no we're not going to be able to see it and we were able to see it the day before we left, so I I was able to check that off my list. And it's such a stupid little thing, but, um, you know, whenever you go to Disney and, and you're running through the decorations and everything, I just 
I felt really lucky to be able to see that before we left. But anyway, just wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and I hope you have a blessed holiday season. Talk to you soon, my friends. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Christine Morrison from Flower Town, PA, and I just got done listening to your podcast about Fort Wilderness campgrounds. I actually stayed there this past summer in the cabins. Uh, there was 15 of us, and we had our own little compound of four cabins all together. Uh, it was an amazing, amazing place to stay. We had so much fun. Um, I really enjoyed you know, getting up in the morning and having my coffee out on the deck and just listening to all the wildlife. It was so peaceful and quiet. And believe me, I am not a camper, not in the slightest. I don't like it, but this is an amazing place to stay. My kids did archery, which was awesome. I mean, who would think you could go to Disney World and learn archery? Um, They went canoeing. Um, People in my party did horseback riding. Um, We ate at Trails End Restaurant, and my 15-year-old is the pickiest eater on the planet. That is his favorite restaurant of all time. Loves Trails End. You ask him his favorite, favorite place to eat in Walt Disney World, and it is Trails End Restaurant. We had an awesome, awesome, amazing time. I highly recommend staying in the cabins. They're so luxurious and had every amenity. Housekeeping even did my dirty dishes for me. They put them in the dishwasher and ran the dishwasher. And the first night, I was really confused because I didn't remember doing the dishes, but the dishes were done. So I thanked them the next day, and they were they were just amazing. Uh, the place was spotless, and I can tell you that they must do really good job with pest control because I didn't have any problems at all with mosquitoes. I don't even remember seeing one, and um, I hate mosquitoes. I had bug spray. Didn't even have to use it one time. Pools were awesome. Everything. It was just a great place to stay. I highly recommend it. Um, And it's such a quick little boat ride to anywhere you would want to go on the Seven Seas Lagoon. So um, thanks for everything. That show was awesome. I wish I had listened to it before I went, um, but I didn't know about it. So I just got done listening to it. And um, thank you for that. And uh, I'd love to get down there during the holidays and rent a golf cart and just go around and look at everybody's lights. Someday, someday. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye. Hello, Lou Mondello. It's Charlene Nagy from West Seneca, New York, and I want to wish everyone a very happy up-and-coming new year, especially for the year of 2018. Yay! This is going to be an exciting year. You guys have a meetup coming up next week, Saturday, at the WDW Radio Meetup of the Month, the first one for 2018, in the Tomorrowland Terrace from 2 to 3.30. So if you're down in the world, go and say hi to Mr. Lou Mangiello and tell him Darlene Maggie from West Seneca, New York, sent you. And we have then 141 days until our trip to the world for my birthday in May. 169 days until the WDW Radio Alaska Adventure on the WDW Wonder. Woohoo! Love the Wonder. Great ship. You guys are going to have a blast. And that Alaska Adventure is going to be absolutely breathtaking. So take note, take lots of pictures, but don't take too many because you want to make sure you see everything up there, especially those glaciers. Look for seals. They're very small from the big ship. Now, I have 272 days until I go back down to the world next year with our best friends, our besties, and our family, the Sternbergs. So, Happy New Year. Stay positive. Thank you, Lou, for everything you do for us. Love you all. Have a wonderful, magical day. You've got a friend.